I think we're live. I think we're live. Are we? Yeah, I'm hearing myself live. I think we're live. Are we? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I I just realized I have my stream open on the side. That was... Hello. Question one. Did I... any of you sleep properly? I think I'm I on about four hours of sleep. How about the rest of like... you? I woke up like five times, so in order to like be not dead, I slept like additional six hours. <laughs> yeah, so definitely not. Although I just woke up from a nap, which was fine. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, I um, didn't sleep well at night, but I slept well now. There it is. I I think I think in terms of programming speak, that's we're 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 as close to a hundred percent as we can be. <laughs> um yeah, so let's uh let's start with a quick introduction. Um I guess I'm start. Uh I'm I'm Frizik, pronounced Fred. Um I uh I'm the lead developer of Genshin Optimizer. How about you, Algo? Well, I'm not a lead developer of Genshin Optimizer, and that's, that's awesome, actually. <laughs> because the amount of work you have to do. But um, yeah, I'm a developer of Enco.network, Enco which is the funny thing that, to get your showcase from the thing, from the game, both Honkai and Genshin. And that resulted in Akasha being a thing, which is, which is Mimi here. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Although I wouldn't give you that much credit because, I mean, I'm very grateful. <laughs> but uh, funny thing, I was actually uh, inspired a lot by um, Project Goomba, I think it was called, which oh, yeah. was based on Genshin Optimizer database entirely, without end at all. Uh, but it was kind of fishy because everybody could, uh, you know, forge their data. And Enka solved that that issue. So that was very good. Uh, so yeah, I'm Mimi, I made Akasha, and I'm the only person working on it currently. So uh, you, you could call me a lead dev. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we actually have like a really good dynamic here, uh, where Optimizer is sort of like... A, purely scientific non-social framework enka is like entirely focused on social and like visuals and kind of the immediate ease of access and akasha kind of straddles the point in between taking like the good parts of each and like making it into a kind of a more of an aggregate application do you, do you think my assessment is correct there that's pretty yeah yeah that's pretty right uh yeah honestly yeah <laughs> It's the pipeline, the theory crafting pipeline. People go on Anka, they start caring about stats. They go on Akasha, they start caring about their ranking. And then they go to Optimizer to optimize the ranking on Akasha. Yes, exactly. Even though I think we've developed all our apps relatively independently, we've somehow became kind of a feedback system on each other. Can I make the cute VTuber things larger? Yes, I can. Most definitely. What's gonna What's the B roll gonna be? Uh, what, what's gonna be happening on stream? I'm not sure. I I think I'm just gonna. I I don't think I want to play Genshin in the background because last time we had the uh, impromptu dev session, I literally couldn't get any Genshin done at all. I think what I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna just open up like wallpaper engine and just go through all like the Genshin wallpaper. Let's see. That could work. And then I just configure it so that it changes every minute. Mm, since I just woke up, I didn't get to ping my server. Oh yeah, we we had a ten minute pre roll, where um you're supposed to ping your server. Hello, Jason. Um yeah, so we actually have a lot to talk about. Oh hey, Jester is our 
uh, and cousin to Akasha's secret tester for <laughs> stress tester, I would say. Uh, tank. Uh, just turn twenty five, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, his profile is crazy. <laughs> right. So I think Jay's turn has been the common ground of stress testers for our websites. I do be kind of be like that, yeah. <laughs> I've talked, I talk, I've talked with him like about the fact that it's like really hard to manage like anchor page specifically, if, like if you have a lot of builds because he has too much, too many of them. Let's see if I can find that Jester anchor page. I will not bear responsibility for the like, explosion of your browser rendering or anything. Oh, Anansh, do you want to get Anansh in here? Mm -hmm. Uh, tell him to join the Genshin Optimizer, like General VC, and I will drag him in. Okay. Oh, wow. Straight from the dossier. Let's, let's, let's look at the extreme case of, um, Enka maxing i think this is the drawer we're looking at this is this is this is jason's uh, stress testing of uh, anka look at these drawers how do how do any web developer rationally design something of this requirement well <laughs> I've been thinking for like the last two weeks about like how to do this less sane, and I th don't think there's a sane way because this thing is insane. So, I I mean I I can't exactly show um, Jay Stern's uh, profile on Genshin Optimizer, but I've seen it on stream. Every time he switches a tab, it literally takes two or three seconds on like characters like Hutao with like several multi targets, each one with like twenty or so targets. Oh my god! Does he like send you profiling data? No, I I just no. I just watch his stream because because he records when he uses the optimizer. He's become kind of like a a pseudo play tester for me to see what like what the the pain points are. <laughs> and so far, it looks like he needs he oh, I need to pay for his uh, therapy bill because the optimizer is uh hasn't been very nice to him. <laughs> oh really? Shows him like bad percentages, or uh, no, no, it's more like the UI has not been very intuitive. Oh, for him. oh, 10% builds, 90% scrolling, exactly. Right, anyways, we do have quite a lot of things to talk about. I think we, I think we should uh, get on it. Um, mm -hmm. Anon is here, by the way. You can drag, drag oh, yeah. him in. Oh, so we can God, this is the first well. time I'm seeing this message. Wait, by using at here, you are about to mention over 3,000 people. Are you sure? <laughs> mm. Right, right. I. Yeah, what can possibly go wrong? What can Maybe possibly I go, go wrong? With everyone. Ah, that's annoying. Hello, Anon. Are you able to speak? Hello. Um, Hello here. Hello, Impact. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm just gonna so, decrease your volume a little. What are you talking about here? Because I'm not watching the stream. Oh, it's okay. Um, for anyone who's watching on stream, Anon here is the creator of Amber.top. Yes, and the Yata.top. Hello here. You block origin has blocked the following point. Oh, wow. Well. Am I? Did I spell it wrong? The what? Here's Amber dot top. Yeah. Um. Can you? Well, can you explain? Um. I I guess in like one or two sentences, what Amber dot top is. It's a website and API for everything related to Genshin Impact. Everything that I was able to get in the data and everything that people asked me. You can use the API for your projects and like CDN. So and the same for Stereo, but it misses some stuff. Actually, I'd like to add something on Ember too, but 
But now, now I'm doing some other stuff. I think it, I think it's great. I I I honestly wish back when we we're like delving deep into the recesses of the data mine, trying to extract data that we had we had you to consult for. I think quite well, a lot. Well, actually. Hmm? Oh, sorry. No, oh, please sorry. go for it. Actually, I worked on this website back in one point one or something <laughs> like that, but it was a lot different. In that time, I used Quasar, that U yeah. UI framework or something like that. Uh, and then some months later, I was like, hmm, need to, need to use my hands and get into Tailwind. <laughs> Actually, before I tried to, I tried to make everything in React, but no, I'm not a fan of JavaScript. I see. I guess that's a good segue into into I guess more technical side. Um, shall we? Should, if if you guys don't mind divulging, what? Uh, oh dear. Mons? Oh, that's actually you can mod us. I think. I think I, I should. Yeah, I think. It now, should. how how does one mod? That's a good question. That's <laughs> a good question. Okay, you you guys continue talking while I try to sort this out. It really is too bad. People are just so um not nice. It happens. No, did you like write all of the UI elements yourself? Uh you're asking or me? Yeah. Yes, of course. It's all it's all my hands. Actually actually uh it's my second project after cars.top, my project for review Starlight, another game. Another game that may remind you Honkai Star Rail because like it's a step by step RPG or how, or how it's called. And like I made Amber just from the mind. I didn't have any concepts or any mock ups. I just din 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 and done. That's I, more or less what I did as well, yeah. Well, before it was a bit different. I tried to make it more game like, but then I was like, Hmm, people don't want it to be game like because you need to click a lot. Need to change that to better. I remember Mimi talking about that in the past, <laughs> so I changed that. I changed that. Uh, to be honest, my m m biggest complaint was the sidebar that was changing uh, the heights of the icons. It was driving me insane every time I visited, but it's fixed. So yeah. that's great. But I, I remember you talked about like making something more flexible or something like that. And, was, and then I was like, yes, you're right. I need to make it more flexible, better. And I did that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I, I mean... also used like Amber a lot because like, I, I think like the only thing it lacks uh, is it's like not. build suggestions, I guess. Like the, you know, like the, how they have it on Diamond and Maya. And... I think like the most of the feature set is just like it's it's the most complete site I think in terms of database. Uh, if someone gave me builds, I'd uh, I, I add them. We have a topic about that later. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you have the base, I input the data, the end. <laughs> right. Well, let's uh, so let's. What, what uh, should we? Yeah, what should we start with? Yeah, let's uh, let's start with. Um... Uh, well, let's let's start with like I, I think I saw a question in stream, and this is um, now I, the stream is going by too fast, and I'm not, actually not used to stream going by too fast. I think the question was something uh, around uh, what are what are difficulties developing a website that needs to be compatible both with desktop and mobile, and how what 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 is the percentage of our uh, viewer base that that is mobile? Uh, so so I guess I can start with that question. I've always tried to make optimizers somewhat uh, mobile usable at, at the very minimum. However, there are just too many buttons and elements to make it very nice for mobile. Not to mention, uh, because it is entirely front-end, you can't really transfer data between the desktop and, uh, and the front-end very well. So I can, I can only say that uh, I struggle a lot with mobile. Um, in terms of percentage, I think up to forty percent of our user base is uh, using it on the mobile side. 
Thirty percent. Thirty to forty percent. Holy shit! The amount of unfortunate people. Yeah. Honestly, if I were you, I would. If I were you, I would probably completely forget about mobile people because. Damn. Well, let me look up. I think like my mobile user share is like sixty percent or something. Uh, so like I just I just have no way of like not I guess uh, having this be a thing because every like every feature I think of I have to first think about well how will that look on mobile I I really like I don't like making completely different uh, designs for mobile and for thing I prefer them to like adapt from big to small and because it's just it's just double work if you do like separate mobile things separate this thing. It's like it makes sense most of the time, but like if you're doing a website, you usually can get away with just adapting it. And like the th the fact that it's the card and it's horizontal doesn't really work well still, but at least you can like scroll it. I could have like made a mobile version of the card, but that's like a bit too much effort. <laughs> and I still didn't do it. People did it in bots in Discord, like for more square cards. So I was like, ah, you can just use a bot. Otherwise, yeah, it's like it's a constant struggle for like JSTERN specifically. Like I was thinking about how to redesign the profile. I like I have an idea, a very good idea for desktop, but I have no idea how to transfer it to mobile. Do I dare look at JSTERN's profile on mobile? I think it's we must. Just like it's just a lot of scrolling. It doesn't look that much different. It's just vertical. Oh yeah, you have two columns of uh, drawers. It is a lot of scrolling for sure, just to get to the card on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Not and to the mention, fact that, like when you when you switch characters, you have to like go back and forth. It's like, eh. mm. um, it's not good. It's it's not good. I think Mimi just sent me uh, his um, Akasha based uh, use uh, user data, so uh, I'm actually quite surprised at the amount of mobile users. Yeah, that's about right. That's about it. Like yeah, almost the same that actually starts when you add these card after cards, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure before I added them, uh, the mobile share was much lower. But once you add it, it's just kind of like quick access. People just uh, get on, generate a card, share it. Which I think is also one thing that Aldo didn't mention about uh, designing for mobile in our case we also have to make sure our cards are really compatible uh, in all the devices and that's kind of painful not gonna lie uh different devices render different things and uh, the libraries to render html into images are just oh yeah I, I, I still have a problem with it because like the cards are not generated on the server the cards are generated on the like the site itself, so you're entirely dependent on how the like your device works with like images and stuff. And there's a thing that allows you to export like a chunk of your page, right? And it had like so many problems that I had to fix, mainly on iPhone. Screw iPhone, I don't like them. <laughs> I I had to like buy a used iPhone, like an old one, just to be able to like debug stuff because it's it's just insane. And like the fix for it. To be able to export images on iPhone is like is even more insane. Like, is just out there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I actually I actually made the cards at first just to make them look cool, <laughs> and, and um, I found some uh, some library to export the image. All right, but then turns out that library just straight up doesn't work uh, with iOS. <laughs> so okay, well the second library. And this one worked, but it turns out it didn't support half of the CSS I used uh, on my entire card. So I had oh. to rewrite the entire right, card. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I think, so. I think that, that, that like that barely happened to me. But then I was like, wait, like I'll have to like render this to like SVG, right? I was like, oh no. So it, like when I started like doing the markup for the card, I used like CSS this little, that was like ten years old. There's no like fancy features in it, almost. And most of the time it's just like positioned using like very specific explicit stuff. 
So like I avoided that for the most part. But yeah, if you're I, naive, you're like, oh, apparently the entire thing I did is not supported, <laughs> and it's annoying. I remember like a very poignant point of optimizer development where we started experimenting with using multi-thread to do uh, for the optimization. I wrote that entire thing over one weekend and I wrote that stuff out hoping that it will ha make everyone happy. Then I realized because I developed primarily on Chrome, it, uh, it's, it doesn't work for Safari. So effectively, I've shut off the entire Safari uh, user base from using Optimizer. And it took, I think, uh, another two or three days of frantic coding to get the multi-thread to work uh, in, the, in the way that Safari uh, dictates that you should. So I guess I think yeah. we can all relate to the fact that not only do we have to make app that, that we can use, but we have to make apps that, that accommodate most of our users across a range of different platforms and browser environments. And you don't even have their devices to test on them. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you guys tested your website on a smart fridge? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when was the last time you launched Genshin on a smart fridge? That's I true. think it should show up in the analytics, right? So if I ever get a smart fridge, I will let you know. <laughs> I, I will go set an alert for this. Hold on. That, I think I think that's uh that's a odd sort of triumph to get your website where someone is trying to force it to use on like a microwave or something ridiculous. Right. That's like the double sided edge of like web development. It's really good that you're able to make a thing and it just works like on a lot of platforms, on like everywhere. But you have you still have to work for it. You still have to like consider all the idio like idiosyncrasies of different like browsers and versions and stuff. People still being on old versions that don't support stuff. People like using Safari of all things. I remember I fixed something for Safari. It broke in Chrome. I fixed it in Chrome, it broke in Firefox. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Well, I think, uh, like, developing in yeah. Firefox is, is, is the best because it like closely, more closely goes against the spec, like resembles the spec, I guess. And then you just like small fixes for other browsers. Yeah, I have exactly the same take and exactly the same in problems. Fixing something in one browser, turns out I screwed up something somewhere else. Great experience. Mostly cards related. Everything else is like just put a flex box, let it wrap, and it works. But yeah. Uh, that's how I worked on my website, but mostly I just played in Inspect Element with Tailwind. It was fun. Like for me, making a website is like playing with Lego, but in Inspect Element or like, uh, honestly, it's sad that there is no like uh, HTML editor where you can use Tailwind uh, oh. and, play, and play it like game. Just sorry to interject, just to uh, warn you guys, I think I am in an ad break, which means that this is this is time in which we could kind of take it slow a little, just so just that so is... that we don't we don't funnel too much of our entertainment towards Bezos. <laughs> I think we can like move on from general development stuff because like everyone who writes front end they mostly know this stuff, but like what is particular specifically to Genshin and uh, mm -hmm. Honkai and stuff. Yeah, most definitely. Because, um, because, like, there are problems with web dev, but everyone has them. We have our very own specific, very fun or not fun problems. Uh, and I've just sent you our, uh, our topic list for um for the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, once uh, mm -hmm. once ads come back in about thirty seconds, we we kind of commence in our. In, in one of our tangents. Which one will be the first? Which one will be the first is, is the decision point. I, I, I guess, well, I... well, actually, let's, let me ask you guys a question. This is going to be, this is going to make us seem like terrible developers for sure. Um, we aren't. We aren't. Uh, no, um, unit tests. Do y'all write them? What, what is, is a unit that? test? <laughs> 
at least from the Genshin Optimizer perspective, I think around nine, like eighty to ninety percent of our code is actually just mostly UI that that changes so often that I've opted not to write unit tests. I think most of our issues have been caught because we're using like Lint and TypeScript and we have like rigorous unit tests for like inner city uh, inner system stuff like um a uh, database so so in this way we've at least kept a balance of not having to write too much unit test how about you guys in a hobby environment the users are your unit test i guess like an integration <laughs> test i would say not a unit test mm -hmm. just just push the production see who screams fix it I just ask my friends, they report, and that's it. I just <laughs> tell my friend, test. like, look at my website, please. Analyze this page. Analyze this page. Done. <laughs> yeah, do, do you have an here. API for that? <laughs> what? Do you have an API for your friends? Like, you, you, when you push, it like triggers them to look at your pages? Uh, I again? just I just PM them. Okay. Uh, manual process all right i i I think in this case like optimizer probably has like the biggest in terms of like non solar de development ship where like most of the code I push is usually reviewed by someone else, so at least there's a, a, another developer who at least read over my code to make sure that I generally don't have haven't written anything too crazy, so I guess that's another how many people are there actually who like run the code base? Um, so I think I'm I'm a big majority of the contributor, and uh, I have Ben who's uh, who's uh, being in instrumental in helping me with uh, just keeping up with a lot of the, the uh, character sheets and character mechanic interactions, so I could focus more on the system side. Um, I have an engine engineer. Who um who's supposed to be working on his PhD, but has decided to pause that just so he could design the most over over engineered calculation engine imaginable to man. And uh, I, I think is that his PhD now? <laughs> that might that might as well be his PhD. I keep telling him that he should publish a paper on it. And we have maybe one or two other developers that aren't too regular, but uh, they do. Uh, we have another another more math heavy PhD that that contributes a lot towards uh, more of our engine optimization as well as uh, the new ar up, uh, artifact upgrader of, and and uh, his math has been instrumental in making making uh, optimizer I guess faster and more correct. So there, I sent you some supplements for your repository. <laughs> well. You could find it interesting, maybe show it uh, to show the scale uh, of what's happening there. Yeah, um, I guess I, sh I should have I should have been more narrating narrating towards the the developer side. But in, in terms of contribution graphs, uh, I'm I'm happy to show that uh, mine's probably the one that lit us the most. Not to say that, not to say that uh, my changes are as important as everyone else's though. Um, how about how about you guys? Uh, I, I'm assuming most of you guys are are solo developers with a closed sourced uh, uh, projects. Yeah, so I could start maybe. Uh, definitely solo. Uh, definitely started just as a. I wasn't even sure if it's going to be public. Uh, I just wanted to see how my hotel is against other hotels, so I just made it. Uh, I started uh, inputting UIDs uh, myself into the database, all the characters, and uh, you know, once I expose my uh, website to the world, suddenly people find interest in that, and it just kicked off. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm solo dev, and I actually didn't do any backend before Akasha. So I just had like very limited Node.js, like Discord bot experience, uh, but this helped me a lot with, uh, there was a question actually in the chat, how, what did we learn from our projects? Uh, and I think I learned a lot, especially optimizations, uh, databases, because before that, it was literally nothing. So yeah. Um, yeah, same for me, more or less. Uh, 
also solo. I am like I'm very particular about the like the design and the architecture and like what I want to do. But like I do have a person helping me with like the back end set of, set of things. Not the not the like profile back end, but the back end that communicates with the game specifically. And I, I, I wouldn't say I am solo in terms of like what I developed because I stand like on the short on the shoulders of at least like six or seven people uh who like provided the knowledge, I guess, and like taught me a lot of stuff about how the game works for us to be able to do the thing we did and like pull out the the data from the game. Because I think it like changed like the fact that we like we did this research over time. It's like cannot be understated because it completely changed the landscape. Uh, like remember when you had to take screenshots, like eleven of them, and drop into Discord. So yeah, um, most mostly like I I did try to find people who like would help me with part of this, and like some did, but it's like really hard to make someone like be cons consistently on it, uh, because like I have the vision for it not really the other person and it's like hard to find someone who actually understands the like ui ux what you're trying to do like as well as i think i do but yeah like even i make a lot of mistakes here i guess that goes on to a a, a good tangent which is to say I, I think this is a question that was also said in chat which is uh do we you know i guess none of us really anticipated that our website will blow up how have we kind of changed as we our websites uh, uh uh gain more popularity and what we've learned from it i think it's kind of a more poignant way of saying it. i know maybe kind of uh, already answered a bit of this but i i would kind of like to provide my perspective um which is that uh yeah i i didn't anticipate optimizer to to get popular i i <laughs> certainly didn't make the best name and i um i kind of regret not making it a, a much nicer name for it um it's i i think uh, optimizer has been kind of instrumental in me changing kind of my career a little going from a, 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 a i guess a more normal firmware developer into a full stack uh, software developer which is is nice and uh, I think I've learned a lot in terms of being able to have multiple hats. Not only am I a programmer, kind of a community manager, someone who makes content on YouTube and on Twitch now, and you know, quite a lot of different hats that I had to learn to uh, wear. Uh, what about you guys? I had a lot of fun. At first, I made it for fun. At second, I made it for friends. My friends liked it. Other people liked it. I continued my development. I met a lot of nice people that helped me with stuff and Alga too. And that's how my development is going. I learn a lot of new programming, web design, UX, UI stuff. And like that's basically it. simple uh what about you algro I, I heard that you've pretty much been able to pivot your entire career i think on the success of shinshin and subsequently enka uh, more or less yeah because like when i made uh, when i made shinshin i like i had literally nothing to do i was like okay that sounds like a fun project so i like made a thing to like automatically recognize parts of images it's like a very involved algorithm i like i wrote it all from scratch um, and like that was up for a while, uh, word of mouth, all, the, all this thing. And I put it on my resume. And when I moved like from one country to another, uh, like in that it ended up landing me a job with this resume, like the, the very first job and the very first interview I did, they needed people who like, um, like it's a, it's a company that works with like, uh, computer vision and stuff on the front end. And they're like, oh, like your skills are pretty like, that's what we need. So I like I just bl blazed through the technical interviews and like that's how I got a job. And finally, fi like finally enough, when I was like ready to basically like accept the job, I was also working on Enka 
by that time already. And it was like more or less ready. So I ended up launching these two things at the same time. And so essentially what happened, I just got two jobs at once. And since then I've been just like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost like two full-time jobs because like for Anki you have to do like a lot of like management design, like actual vo work, uh, su supporting people, like they write you like, oh, my email is, like, is wrong, I type it or something. And like you're doing all of this alone. And then there's also the, the day job when you come back from it and you're like, eh. <laughs> So, like, that was more or less the reason why I, like, really slowed down recently. But, yeah, now I'm thinking, like, should I just, like, quit my job? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we do have a topic on, I guess, the profitability of our websites. And this is, if you're not comfortable talking about, like, the more financial stuff, I totally understand. I, I want to be certainly transparent about that. But I, I think we'll get there when we get there. Uh, I think, I think we like have... me and Mimi are profit, profit, profitable and on as well. Like he has ads. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But no, it's we'll, fine. We'll we'll get there. I think we'll get there. I think I think a good segue is to uh, talk about uh, more of the interuser re relationship. How the content that we create in our apps e either influence how players interact with the game or how pl how players understand the game as a whole. Um, right. I, like, I've always tried, like, I think, like, the main point, we always try to not tell people how to play the game, right? That's a big thing for Optimizer, for sure. Yeah. So it's, like, it's really, you have to, like, think about it, because you're, you are doing a tool that people will use, and you are, like, they will get the information from it. So choosing which information they get from it is, like, extremely important. Because people make financial decisions based on whatever you tell them. So it's like a really, really like big responsibility, I feel. I've always tried to like not push people to spend more is like the main thing. Because when Anchor happened, uh, it like allowed people really easily, and like in Shinshin, really easily discuss the builds and stuff. So they could get help with optimizing what they have even if they don't like involve themselves like optimizer and all this like complicated math you can just go to a friend and the friend will I, I, like oh okay this is your build i see like you need this and this and this and it like optimizes their gameplay resulting in like them spending less that's my like main thing oh fred costs me all your money okay <laughs> well yes but also the reverse argument can be made like Oh, because they can share and flex their stuff, they will want there to be more stuff to flex and share. So it doesn't like you don't really know what like what influence you have in this case. Um, yeah, I... so you mentioned not telling people how to play, and while well, that's definitely for application optimizer, I think. Uh, I was thinking about Akasha right now and um, you know, my leaderboards, uh, leaderboards literally enforce a certain team, right? So technically, I'm the exact opposite here. Uh, although this website was never supposed to be a guide uh, or, you know, uh, you're not even supposed to really compare results from leaderboards to each other because they obviously have, uh, it's not like key, uh, catching main standard uh, teams, right, or something. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I need to add a lot of disclaimers, and people still get it wrong. I, I, I think I have disclaimers. a... I have a, I guess, slightly different interpretation of this. I, I think that your leaderboards in Akasha, sure, they might tie into the real game and it, it, it changes how people interact and compare their bills oh i'm the top one percent oh i'm the top 500 to uh, ride in shogun or something like that but I, I think i think you've made it and evolved it to a point where it's almost like a meta game of its own as in like due to the, almost like the general consensus of lack of end game for genshin our websites have kind of sort of almost become a point where it's like the new end game would you agree? Um, possibly. And also, that also reminded me, I'm actually somewhat proud that people, and you should too, <laughs> because uh, actually when I look at Reddit now and somebody has really low crit rate, 
they actually tell them they have low crit rate. I think Akasha was huge for that. Uh, it was a big culture shock for people when they see that their 60 crit rates, uh, I don't know, Raiden with 300 crit damage is not quite, you know, uh, consistent. Uh, and I think people are actually starting to realize that. And yeah. I think uh, because Optimizer still has a very big uh, barrier of entry, so there is not that many users. So even if you tell somebody just use Optimizer, uh, it's actually very likely he's not going to, uh, because you know he will just bounce back from the barrier. Um, but yeah, uh, and your original question was uh, that wait, because I just lost track. <laughs> it's it's okay. I I understand. Uh, it's going to be a lot of tangents. Uh, I think my main question was that: Do you think that we've established? a new end game for ourselves where there isn't really too much end game content in Genshin. Oh, well, definitely yes. people joking will say that, uh, that there's Akasha meta. So uh, there's something there for sure. I think like it's, it, it is like that. Yeah. Because you like the core of the game is, I guess, like just setting goals for yourself. There's like, once you did the story, uh, there's not much to do, I guess. You just do abyss over and over. And like, there's one thing where you optimize for abyss to be able to pass abyss, to be able to get like more prima gems for like new characters, I guess, and like build them. Uh, that's the entire game, more or less. Uh, for that, you use optimizer. But otherwise, you just invent challenges for yourself, I guess. You're like, oh, I want to get like 100% crit rate, for example. Or like I want to have like the best something, uh. So yeah, I guess. Um, I guess this is more of a, a question extension to what we say. Uh, we we kind of given our perspectives on how uh, how users kind of change as they interact with our website. Let's 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 expand this. Uh, we've 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 known about other websites uh, that does a lot of Genshin content. Some of them you know ho post other things that we might not be fully happy with uh, i would say websites that either score artifacts based on like an arbitrary like s2 ssr value or tier lists or or website that gives opinionated content without really being able to kind of support a lot of their claim what do you think their place is in terms of the great uh, genshin developer experience kind of like always regarded them as like things made to host ads because this is like this is absolutely like the casual i guess uh, side of things where you like people play the game like oh what what is the best x and they just game uh, like go on google and just google it and there's like the C like seo optimized sites like oh guides for these guys for that here's how you solve the quests here here's how you not think we we will think for you and yeah, like, that's not my style, but many people actually do play all of the games like that. Like, they start the game, they immediately launch the guide and just follow it. Yeah, I'm just waiting for chat GPT generated uh, copy paste to websites, right? What do you mean uh, waiting? <laughs> what do you mean waiting? <laughs> Aren't there already, like, a thousand of them? Yeah. I think it's a safe uh, assumption that if a website has a tier list, then you should probably start questioning it. Yep. Like, I wouldn't mind a tier, tier list where you click on the character and it, like, provides, like, a 10-page reasoning for the placement in the, in the tier list. Have but, you like, seen this you cannot Chinese... Tier list, like, um, a character. Yeah, have you seen this Chinese tier list attempts from, like, Uncle something, whatever? He was doing them... A while ago, and yeah, 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 he yeah. makes like four columns. He includes constellations. He ranks differently, DPS, support, whatever. Uh, I I think it's a fine attempt, but it still it still has flaws. The thing is, like you're trying to reduce a very multi-dimensional game to a single like two-dimensional chart, I guess. Even three-dimensional is not enough, because the character depends on the team. You cannot like or at least a character just by itself. So, like, it's just, yeah, it lacks an incredible amount of context. 
That's what it is. No, no, somebody in the chat said that Akasha made them ne neglect uh, the character talents and levels because my leatherboards assume max 90 out of 90 and crown. I oh, mean, no. that's, that's why it depends on your goal. If you want big, big funny number, that's what you do. But, but for your numbers to be comparable, you have to assume a baseline. That's where you drew the line. I totally understood that. I guess it's it just more of like a cautionary tale, as in, you, you, you in theory might be like the top 1%, but if, until you level up your character, it, it wouldn't be as effective as a, uh, the leaderboard would indicate. I could technically just switch it, right? It's not a big deal to just take the level from the profile instead of just setting it to 19. Uh, yeah, but let's see, that. that's a choice I made, and... I guess I'm just sticking with it for now. I think it's like it's both like it equalizes people, which is pretty good. But it also <sighs> there's like less focus on like actually building your stuff and like actually having that damage that you show on the leaderboard. So it's like I don't know. Do you need that character to do damage? No, then like you shouldn't care about this. I'm pretty sure I'm responsible for some percentage of Mihoyo. Uh, revenue because people just um, wish for a level one character to, <laughs> to put on the showcase and just leave it there and never even play it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, we've done the bad thing. Are we the bad guys? I don't think so because <laughs> if there was like if there was incentive to actually actually use the characters, like the thousand characters they're releasing then maybe, but like I, at this point, I don't really play the game. Uh, and like the, the only fun character I found, uh, like that was really fun to play is Amber, but like you don't need any, like you don't need to pull anything for Amber. So like you might as well just stop wishing at all. Uh, if there's like some end game thing where it's like, you really are interested in that and you really need to build your characters, then yeah, sure. But at this point, like there's not really a reason to. I think everything is very simple in your case. I mean, optimizers, rating, it's just people have a characters to pull and like a lot of characters. They want to upgrade them, like to, uh, to find out what weapon to pick and like, um, they just, they just look at what other people created already. And for Mime, they have a Kasha, they look at rating, and they're like, wow, people made so, like, so strong build, and it's stronger than other characters. Nice, I'm gonna try to make this build, and I'm gonna put, pull this character. For Optimizer, they're like, hmm, how to calculate the damage or defense? And I'm like, huh, I... Uh, like it's hard to do manually so like wow yeah there's optimizer like thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna try a lot of variations and find the best one thank you Genshin optimizer or when they just want to look at stats or basic info they go to ember.top and that's it it's very simple it's, it's actually like one thing about this is like okay i want to optimize a character but like <laughs> there's like the thing of diminishing returns you try to like squeeze the like the very like least bit of damage out of your characters like you farm for artifacts to get like like more damage but the Genshin curve is really aggressive like the Bro. amount of effort you need to put to be able to like g get yourself like a hundred more damage is like immense I think it makes you smarter. Optimizer actually shows that. Oh yeah, we recently added the up, uh, artifact upgrade feature that calculates the possibility of increasing your target uh, from leveling a particular artifact towards a very well built character. You eventually get to a point where it's like a zero point two percent chance to increase your target by like zero point three percent or something like that. Yeah, it's like depressing numbers actually. But hey, we're, we're gotcha gamers, right? Percentages don't exist. They're all 100%. I think there is also the second, um, you know, side of the story here, because uh, we are, uh, like, we have artifacts, right? Uh, but it's very possible that for somebody to use Optimizer and get immediate 20% more 
average damage increase just because you know uh, they don't have many artifacts and they were just using wrong right like that that's to the to say that getting a hundred more damage is hard right uh, it gets hard there but at first it's definitely not hard uh, mm. I think it goes I'm not sure what how you call the graph that just gets flatter and the higher you go right Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, I think, I think I want to kind of center this discussion on more like a generalized discussion, um, especially towards, I think none of our tools uh, are really there to tell people how to play the game. So how, how, so whose responsibility is it to, I guess, educate people? Well, I guess or... nobody's, I guess like the game company. <laughs> Uh, I was but about to say that because now they, uh, Mihoyo actually added these uh, more and more uh, guide systems into the game, right? Uh, although they are very one dimensional, uh, just tells you what main stats to use, doesn't really elaborate, refuses to elaborate, uh, leaves. <laughs> uh, and it's only based on statistics, which actually can be wrong. I think Xiao's talent priority is still wrong, and it will never be right because it's based on the players. Um, so yeah. So it's I interesting think... because like they did a feedback loop. People build it wrong. They do statistics on the people who did it, did it wrong, and more people build it wrong. And like, okay, <laughs> what does it accomplish actually? They can't add optimizer in the game, of course. So like, yeah. They can't. Think people... They can add optimizer, oh, but I think it would use up a lot more CPUs for sure. <laughs> it will add the minimum requirement I mean... for all like PCs or tablets. But I totally I agree like that uh, also their fault that the <laughs> system they made is too complex for its own good. So at this point, they're like suffering from their own complicated system. Like it is complicated. It adds more confusion to be able to make people like question their decisions and like not be sure about what to do so i think this just like leads to the complexity of it and the fact that it kind of eyeball it leads i would to say it's like kind more of revenue, a, essentially I, I don't know if it's intentional or not i would say it's kind of a trap actually for players because yeah. it uh, genshin is a really simple game and it really doesn't need that complicated system but it has it so uh, when you start the game and you see that and you're like, oh, damn, that game must be really complicated, right? And then you clear Abyss 12 and that's it. Uh, like, I was actually one of the people who got trapped into into Genshin. I thought it's, you know, MMO maybe. Uh, then, okay, maybe Co-op is, you know, great. And we have an artifact system is great. There's so much potential for the, uh, you know, for the end game and stuff. But, but yeah, Genshin is a really simple game in the end, uh, with a really complicated artifact system. Um, and I think I wanted actually to jump to a question that was in the chat that was somewhat related. Can um, I can I tell yeah. my answer to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to say that nobody have to tell anyone what to do. It's players that have to ask themselves why, like. You have the game, and you're making your your character stronger to to win balls as fast, or like you like math and you want to show your nice calculations, or you just want to flex. And it's developers like accessible to eighty percent of the people, like thinking about builds. Well, about accessibility, it's <laughs> like to use optimizer. You need to learn a bit. And no, no, no. I'm, like, I mean, it's, like, it's educational. Like, look, I mean, this person educates us. If you say, like, the people should think for themselves, I don't think 80% of players are able to figure out which build to use. Because, like, we have two math majors in Optimizer figuring this stuff out. Uh, like, okay. <laughs> it's like, it's really hard to eyeball. Yeah, so, I, I can like, sort of speak to that. Inevitably, I, I, people build. The system is uh, the artifact system is very complicated. Uh, one of the questions in stream was basically how much Genshin optimization complexity is due to the off piece. I'd say up to like forty percent. 
I think if if you have strict sets that have uh, if sets have uh, set effects have more impact and there's no off piece, optimizer could run at least forty percent faster. It's unfortunately that you have to include too. every other artifact as a potential for off piece that you get this exponential growth in calculation time. Yeah. And it's like, it will be just like simpler. You build this set, that's it. So I guess that will be kind of more interesting once we get into the Star Rail Optimizer PM. It's, you know, it, since uh, there's technically no offsets involved with SRO, how much of the optimization, uh, optimization system can we simplify because of this uh, difference in system design? Yeah. So, what was Mimi going, going to say? Yeah, Mimi, you had a, you uh, had a question you want to answer? Uh, I have a very short, a short term memory. <laughs> uh, but I believe the, it was related. Um, uh, okay, that's not saved in my notepad, uh, which is bad. Uh, I believe, I'm not sure how I was supposed to connect it, but somebody asked us, asked, asked if we. Uh, ever thought about working for Mihoyo? Uh, and I said that, you know, it's probably not going to happen, but uh, there were cases of third party websites or applications being acquired by some Western company because they were just successful. Uh, you know, the publisher just gets somebody under their wing. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen with, uh, uh, with Mihoyo though. Um, maybe if we were from China. <laughs> I, um, it's interesting because like they have the resources to like steal all of our ideas and just implement them in their like within in house, I guess. Really, who'd be but foolish enough to put that, their like, code open source? Clueless. Uh, that, but also like they just can like look at it and copy the, what it does, I guess. Like yeah, the, I was the, uh, actually they I know with, how like, I was Honkai supposed cards. to. Yeah, so that's one of the things. The Honkai cards are actually a thing, and the guides, right? Like the. They are starting to put them in the game. The island priority recommendations. You know, before we had a website for that, you went to like end of Genshin GG or I don't know if probably every website has it, some kind of uh, talent priority, and you you know you roll with it. But now you have it in game, uh, and I think they actually want to keep doing that uh, instead of acquiring us. So, you know. That's the thing. Like, there are some things they absolutely could steal, like the cards, right? But there are some things that they will never do just because, like, it being first party uh, puts, like, a certain expectation. They will not do, for example, uh, like, I cannot, I cannot say what they will and will not do, but they, they, they will not definitely do an optimizer. Not like an optimizer. So, yeah, they will not do an optimizer. They might do some. I think they're like we're trying to do some like uh, showcase thing, like team builder thing, kind of on Hoyo Lab or something. It was like very limited, and I'm not sure what purpose it served. But I think they wanted it to be uh, something that like people could communicate to each other which teams to use. I don't know. Uh, but they're like trying to expand Hoyo Lab. The problem is like Hoyo Lab is. I don't think it's a good source of information on how to play the game at all. And like, despite all the efforts, it still is kind of, huh? Like you visit Hoyo Lab, you, you have no idea like what, what it is, what it does, where to find information about the game. And you Google and you immediately find all, all the information you asked for. Like what do I level, which character is the best, all this stuff. Algo, you reminded me that Hoyaviki is uh, Project Amber and Honey Hunter <laughs> like merge. Uh, yeah, Hoyaviki exists actually. I've, Complete I've, with the bad like, UI I've, decisions, if I may say I so. I complained it. Oh, sorry. I haven't been there in so long. Uh, look at it. It, like for me, it's literally like if Honey Hunter had my UI. <laughs> Uh, can you open Hoya Viki? Like, and the thing I like, I, I don't think I've ever seen this like, before. Hoya sites. It's pretty. Yeah, it's like well, it's they. It was promoted, but then I like fell off. So like, y you almost have no idea that it even exists, and it's like strange. 
It's like they, it's not it's, promoted. It's not directly. As far as I know, it. they input the data manually for each language. Yeah, also this. And, and there is a good thing that came out of this, and that is, I believe, API. I think all of that information is actually accessible with a simple API. Oh uh, gosh, problem, no. The problem is like the API is not simple. The pro like the API is overloaded with like baked strings yeah. and stuff. HTML, I mean, if it requires some weird. kind of cookie or something, then yeah, that's no, 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 you don't need to. Uh, the problem like the API is just like it's not meant to be a public API, it's just the API that it uses, and it's just like overloaded with like even the IDs are wrong. HTML. Like, you, 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 it does not use the in game IDs, you cannot map anything to anything, it's like completely useless. Uh, well, uh, actually, they have like uh, a lot of entries, uh, inside these entries. There are JSONs with uh, a lot of HTML code, and basically, it's scary. it's, uh, it's HTML input website, HTML templates website. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. So it's oh. like it's not like while well, Ember top, like you just like hit the API endpoint and get all the stats for like the character and all the numbers with like decimal precision. This everything is like, simple. Oh, yeah, everything is simple. And like accessible. Here, it's it's not usable to the developers. And there's no like a really incentive to use it, I guess. There's only for players to use it. But then again, it like it just misses some information. Well, you can always parts. find a way to to scrape the data from Hoyaviki, but why? I I think this is oh, a oh, good oh, 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 this, this is a good segue into I guess our next big uh section in our um yapping dossier which is api related pings i think uh, as all the developers we need some sort of interface to get data and um, i guess the, the structure of uh, uh, genshin or you say like external stuff like the wiki has been uh, sufficient to say unsatisfactory in giving us workable data uh, and it's also like it's not their aim to provide a reliable API because it's, it's like their API is just a product of them like needing to have it. So it changes all the time for most of the things you need to like, like make the user provide their own login information, like, and, and like cookies and stuff. And it's like, it's really, yeah. I can complain about the data a lot. <laughs> yes. As Algo said, it changes all the time. Sometimes one data mo moves to another place. Like uh, when we had an uh, enemies list in the like uh, Abyss 4 list, but then it moved. Then they add some unknown values that you can't connect anywhere because it's maybe server side linked. And you need to merge all this data in the one place and give it to people my approach is this is simple i just yeah i just found how everything is connected then like merge it merged it as much comfortable as possible and then like add it a uh, function to change languages and that's it what do you think like the percentage of uh, of your time is spent just figuring out the changes instead of actually working on the site? Uh, actually, not much. Uh, thanks to my friends, I deal with structure changes or I do it myself. Like, it depends. Mikhoyo can always, like, Mikhoyo can add one field or they can add a giant structure that they may not use or it would be used somewhere else where you're not gonna pick it up. It depends. Like uh, in in minor versions, uh, the data that I need might might not change. But in major version, like you have no idea what can be what could be changed. But actually, actually, uh, changes can happen at any time. Like with be okay file structure it changed a bit and the end half I like, like also like, yeah most part yeah, of the community problem. wasn't able to figure out how to deal with that and the same with databases so like Mikhoyo can change how a database work in 
like in 5.0 it just we have to see and why like, we have it's also like hmm? oh sorry yes yeah, like just a delay it's like it's unhealthy at um, moments like the community is unhealthy because of this because sometimes to be able to update your site you yeah. need to have ex access to like beta stuff and beta is not supposed to be shared yeah, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, you true. have like all like this gatekeeping and like tools are being uh, like you cannot dump uh, like images for example for your guide website that like doesn't deal with leaks at all because the tools that are used to get this data are used for leaks and therefore are not shared and you have like this kind of thing that like okay if they were open these tools leaks would happen like a lot more widely i guess but also okay. normal like people who just want to like look at the release data they cannot use it at all so it's like it's really complicated stuff yeah so you have like there is always a fight between people who just want to like work with the data and have tools and people who want to like have tools and leak the data and like you can do anything with that it's it's all up to the community yeah, it's, just, it's just tools mostly i i think in terms of api optimizer kind of has like a weird i guess uh situation where optimizer doesn't work unless we have both game data where we do all the calculation but also all the user data so the need for api especially with optimizer is exceptionally huge uh, so look, even from the fundamental system we rely we depend on like a reliable data uh, data mine that doesn't change very often so we could extract all the numbers for our formulas and then we need to extract all the assets from the game to to use for as images for the website and further on users have to find ways to inject their own user data and and so our, our solution so far with with like that is to just create like scanners we we have like these uh image recognition scanners that takes like screenshots of your game or something and then uploads them one by one which has been incredibly tedious uh in terms of both the uh, community to kind of get on board uh, or be able to make the best with what they have so i, I think in terms of anchor or there there is no public way to be able to uh, import a lot of that data oh this is basil's time oh basil's, basil's time gotta go silent <laughs> i mean it's we could take a bit of a break if you have any beverages near you do take a sip we got to stay hydrated i think we're going to be yap for at least two or three more hours so you, you might as well apple pace juice. your throats apple juice apple there you go what are you drinking guys water coffee water and coffee that's good i usually have like kind a of like this this the stereotype of developers just like downing coffee i for the longest time i couldn't handle coffee i think i had like too much insomnia that i worried what will happen if i go on coffee and when when at one point during a very stressful point in my like work work career that i thought maybe i should try this superpower i realized coffee gives me more anxiety than i already have and I've somehow functioned less less effectively with coffee. I had one in the morning already, and for me, it's like tasty water. <laughs> like, uh, I don't think that it gives me any buffs. It's just a spicy water. <laughs> water. Coffee is spicy water. Coffee is just a soup. Because it's, <laughs> it's a bean soup, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I I think we're we're back. Uh, no more edge. Uh, let's get back on topic. Getting getting I think data has been tremendously hard for I think all developers involved. I think especially with optimizer, simply because we need all the artifact data, and the the roundabout way of doing it is to either have an on-site scanner or have like third-party scanners that like either manipulate your game or or scans it from like a video capture or something and 
all of those solutions are not very nice for anyone that's not using PC. Um, I think Enka has made it slightly easier, but the, the way in which they acquire data isn't quote unquote stable. I think it could change at any point where, well, I'll go isn't here, but I, I think I can speak for him that every new patch, there's a, there's a non-zero amount of time he has to spend to make sure that his, his existing data pipeline, his existing methods of getting the data isn't broken. Hey, I'll go. I just spoke for you. Um, how difficult yeah. is it every time there's a new Genshin patch to make sure everything still works? It depends. Uh, it would have been less difficult if I was like if I did more tools to like diff the data. I guess did more automatic tests. Had like specific profiles that never change to like automatically map the old data to the new one. <sighs> but like I'm too lazy because it happens like once a month. Or like once every like two months, I guess. That's like the first reason why I don't automate it. It's like easy, like it's easier to do it manually. And I guess like it it depends, because in some versions you just need to map the old data to need the the new data. Uh, sometimes they do some kind of funny thing where you have to like, not rewrite everything, but like add like whole new systems. You first need to figure out what the system is, and then you need to like implement it. And like you have limited information and stuff. Uh, the main thing here is like, I think the thing that I'm most annoyed by is like Anka is down for like an un un unspecified amount of time after the update happens because I need the server to come back online to see what data changed, and like I go from starting from there. So, and also the maintenance happens like at the very ungodly time. So I have to like wake up at like at 7 a.m. to be able to like immediately request the data and figure out what to do with it. It all depends if Mihoyo added one more field or no. Yeah, it, it, it just depends. For like for example, one field, for, one for, hour. For <laughs> I'm for Hongai, they added like a whole new like a whole lot of things in the last update. Uh, for for story, I mean. Uh, they added like the history, the I guess like abyss or whatever it's called, uh, abyss stats, like this kind of thing, and it's like fetch fetchable by a showcase. But like we don't have any names for it. It's just like just numbers in the in the like in the connection. So you have to like okay, we don't have any names, so we need to like come up with names that will not be like maybe like we have no idea more or less. So we have to like come up with uh, our own solution. There's like an API for Honghai. It's like I am not the only one that provides the showcase access for uh, for Star Rail. There's also people called like Mihomo, <laughs> uh, and they also do this API. So we usually like coordinate with this guy to have like exactly the same fields uh, field names as they do. So it's like it's a fair bit. If they change something, you have to do like a bit of legwork. Not only to like I guess reverse engineer it, but also to like collaborate with people who also use this and you need to like provide new fields in the API, maybe add it to the website and you need a new design for it. So there's like, it depends. Yeah. And you, you need to do all of that while the patch is already running. And this is what is like more or less annoying. Helping each other is always nice, even if mm -hmm. it's just like, uh, some fields or some images, like I give to you all every month. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like the inter-community support is really good in Genshin because every like everyone works on specific things. They obtain their own pieces of data. Like somebody can dump images, somebody can do the data mine, like Dim Breath. He has the data mine. He provides it provides it for like the entirety of the Genshin runtime, unwaveringly, like all the time. And everyone relies on that. Uh, if we didn't have that, we would be like more split, I guess. If it was gate capped, people would like it, it will just be unhealthy. And I think like the dev community we have is is pretty good because we just like share the data that we have. Would you say we've united against a common enemy? It kind of feels like that, to is be there, honest. But there's no enemy. The, it just shows, like, the, well, the enemy bad. is the lack of, I guess, support. We have yeah, to support well, each yeah. other. 
Yeah, I think if there was actually an API from Mihoyo that was, you know, working perfectly, I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be that much, uh, you know, uh, we wouldn't be connected as much. We would just sure. each do our own thing. Um, I, I don't I, really have a... Uh -huh. Well, my perspective is that, I guess, if we go on this guided meditation of thinking Mihoyo provided with us as an API of all the data that we want, I at least from the optimizer perspective i think at least three months of my of my precious life can be recovered there's there's so much of the like the scanning the the getting getting the data the making sure parsing the data is in a correct function and just even th very small things the whole you round their final numbers when you use a scanner you only get the finally rounded number so we have to reverse extrapolate how many rows you have on your artifact that has taken us weeks and months of discussion just to get to a point where like only 90, like I'd say 99.7% correct. There's still cases where the rounding just makes absolutely no sense, but we can't, we, we literally can't predict it. So having... It makes for funny situations where uh, you input some five liner or whatever, five rolls, six rolls, and the optimizer thinks <laughs> it, it rolled so low that it thinks it's just, you know, <laughs> one less roll than it actually is. Yeah, there's like a funny, funny case when like, oh, uh, like my optimizer says like, oh, it's like a three really high rolls. And then they check on Anka because Anka has like specific data about rolls. And it's all like it's it's five or six like low rolls, just like very 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 low rolls, just like single single dots, all of them. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I, everyone can relate. I do. I do have something to say with that because we don't know what exact rolls are. We choose the most pessimistic outcome, which is the lowest number of rolls, simply because we have to tally up all the rolls in the artifact to make sure it's valid. So so going pessimistic in that case makes the algorithm go slightly faster. But it goes into cases where optimizers say, yeah, it's, it's three good row, and then you go on Anka, it's just four bad rows. And then people who count by rows just, just kind of instinctively understand that counting by rows is, is probably not the best metric towards towards game progression. Yeah. Also, the like the did you say about the... Did you mention like the scanners are like a PR thing, and it's like a liability? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so at the beginning of Optimizer, Optimizer was kind of posted all over in like the official Genshin Impact uh, Discord. But I noticed after we started putting like a list of curated scanners that, uh, that we were just kind of, kind of effectively soft banned, uh, our website wouldn't be pinged. When people recommend it, they have to add like a disclaimer, use, uh, use Optimizer, but then you don't use scanners because they're technically against the term of service. But then if you don't use scanners, you literally, it's like incredibly difficult to get data in. Uh, I, I talked yeah, to one of them. It, it turned in this funny, like, 1984 situation where, like, everyone who talks about Optimizer in the official channels, they have to do this, like, big disclaimer, like, use the Optimizer. And then there's, like, three paragraphs of, like, disclaimer. Like, like there's, our, there's, like, scanners. Don't use scanners. They, like, they're third-party tools. They interact with the game. Like, you'll get death, death, death. <laughs> yeah, that's... It's, <laughs> it's kind of, like... Uh, well, it's, uh, today I, I, I like I don't know everyone anyone was banned for them. No, I, I don't. I, we have never heard anyone getting banned for using scanner. And scanner kind yeah. of occupies like a theoretical gray spot where it's like it kind of feels kind of sketchy. It was with the under, with the understanding or misunderstanding of the TOS, and it, they might not. I think I think Genshin Impact Discord was taking kind of the safer route out. And when I did talk to one of their moderators, they effectively said either remove the page of curated scanners that if that kind of promotes this almost against TOS behavior, or or it remain kind of soft block or soft soft band. I chose to keep the the list of curated scanners because I think it's better that we offer a list of like scanners that we we've used, we we know it's safe. Then for for our user to have to Google up a solution, download something, and then, and then ultimately they either download download something that, that's bad for the computer or they, they expose yeah. themselves to some security risk. And I think that's ultimately, ultimately bigger the, evil. Yeah, it's all the good thing. It's not a big evil, a bigger evil because like you're preventing a lot of like bad stuff by doing a curated page. But yeah. Uh, have we coded the scanners? Uh, one of our scanner uh, developer, uh, D1 Firehall, is, is actually one of the moderators at uh, 
engine optimizer because we want to harbor this kind of uh, relationship where we kind of almost have a parasitic relationship we need data and they could they could provide the data um there, there are there's a scanner on the Genshin optimizer website but uh, you will almost have to screenshot every single one of your artifacts and that that has not been a good experience for most people either yeah that's like the main, main point is just getting your data from the game to the optimizer so you either have to like do launch a program that interacts with the game it like clicks into the game right so the, the TOS is unclear if that's, that could be like unfair advantage or something. It is unclear if the anti-cheat anti mm -hmm. like sees this clicking. It's, it is like, it's just unclear more or less. So it's like in this, that's why the moderators were like, eh. There is one scanner that just uses a browser and you just stream your Genshin, but it cannot click automatically. You have to do it manually. Uh, I think... I think it's all developers. I mean, Mihoyo, let's be simple. This scanner doesn't give us any advantages. Like, it doesn't make our gacha better. It doesn't make our characters overpowered in some clicks. It just takes the data from the game. And that's it. And I, I think it's all, like, on Mihoyo to get really bothered with that. I, and I don't think like anybody like higher up who will make the decisions like the executive decisions even like is aware of this happening, or, like uh, even same. is aware of the things. We only have TOS. We only have moderators that like can read the TOS and interpret it and like in their way. But there's like otherwise there's just, like no way to get any communication about this. Yeah, like, what is safe? Sad. What is not safe? What is allowed? What is not allowed? Uh, it's like the main problem. I think you just operate like yeah, in, it is, in the fog all the time. If we had some kind of verification, <laughs> what is? Yeah, so it's like people higher up, I guess, will not do yeah. that. But there but needs maybe... to be like a specific position that like manages this liaison within like between uh, developers and stuff. I mean, I think we're talking around the, the the kind of the bigger, slightly bigger problem, which is that it's very feasible for you to kind of get like your full inventory within like a couple of minutes you just yeah. effectively have to give uh, give uh, that uh, anonymous developer the door to your house or i guess the garage key code and they will effectively log in capture a, a packet from your game and then just parse everything and, and i yeah. think other games have systems like this but with uh, genshin it being a lot of accounts being so such high monetary investment that no one in their right mind would want to use this the methodology. Yeah, that's what because like I wanted to do a tool that will like extract this data for you, just like it captures the network information, just like decrypt, decrypts it, and bam, you have the whole inventory. But it's like I think I could do it with the like the brand recognition of Anka. Like people would assume it's safe. But it will be teaching people first. It's like it's okay to run shady things on your like software, uh, like like on your computer. You do yet you do not know what it does, and like only I do more or less. So I mean, it would be thing. possible you would be banned from the Discord server. Uh... Yes, but like you could just like do a word of mouth. You never officially like release the thing. It will have like limited usability, but like people will just like DM th the thing to each other. Yeah, but imagine then again, you're asks, like, oh. where did you get the cards from? You know, very common question on the Discord server, and you, you know, you, you cannot answer because hmm, that's a blacklisted website. No, 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 like the thing is, like it wouldn't get blacklisted if you just like released a tool that captures your stuff for optimizer on like optimizer channels. Uh, it's like it's banned anyway, but or just like using word of mouth. But the thing is, like, just throw it on GitHub or something. But the, the thing is, you have to have like your own in infrastructure supporting it. That's first, and the second is is just like it's 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 first. It's like annoying to maintain first, and the second is you are trusting weird software that like intersects your net uh, intercepts your network to intercept it safely and send it safely and uh, like maybe the anti-cheat will like oh there's a suspicious thing we know what this thing is used, is used for and they just ban the account for using it and like i don't want to bear the responsibility for like 
getting someone banned with like two thousand dollars in their account. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's possible because you don't know what's with Genshin's anti cheat. Yeah, like it scans every single process. Like yeah. if they blacklist the thing, okay, like it will flag you. I think it's kind of a I think in terms of Genshin development, it's just kind of we could be using a lot more cursed software, but I think we at least in this collective group we have the slightly higher moral high ground of not thinking about the consequence of doing so. Uh, I think it will be more problematic if a uh, methodology like this is kind of to be available to the public because it exposes users to unnecessary amount of risk. Pretty much, yeah. Um, let's let's I guess let's let's move on to uh, the the kind of the big meat and potatoes of our discussion, which is the the general Genshin community dev experience. Um, I, I think you know we I think we at least in the in the document here we did the kind of separated by the good the bad the ugly and somehow the good the good bullet points have like almost no bullet points I, i'm not, I'm not saying i'm not saying that that's indicative of anything but uh, i think maybe maybe we could just like talk about at least the the kind of the what it would take to i, I guess in terms of experiments uh make our lives better or maintain the goodness um, so, so uh, oof, that's a sense I wasn't prepared to say out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> I, I was, it's, it's a sentence that kind of, I started speaking and then I wasn't sure where it was going. Um, that's why I apologize. But I think in terms of like Genshin optimizer development, uh, we have a very supportive community, it being a purely community driven tool. And it, it will not be where it is without the community providing feedback offering uh, feature requests and bug reports, that kind of stuff. And I think that that is true for all of the rest of your, your tools as well. Uh, and I think us being like mostly community driven developers, our interaction with the community is probably our biggest asset. What do you think? I think that will be true for any projects, honestly. Like not even Genshin, just any software development project. And like as as long as you do something that like people find very valuable, I guess you will get the support. Well, I'd say I have very good communications with people in my chat or something like that. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes you find bad reviews, like oh, Project Ember didn't add that. Project Ember. Uh, mistaken in that part that even isn't related to the website, but about the translation because I don't trans I don't translate <laughs> Genshin yeah, Impact, and like people come, they ask, uh, I think how to solve it, I find a solution or maybe ask them, and the end. Um, what What about you, Mimi? I I think as as you release a cash dive, your presence, at least in the community, especially on Discord, has become mm -hmm. you appear on uh, Discord and people start asking for leaderboards. I think if, if chat is any indicative, I think every every 10 chat or so has been a request for leaderboard. What do you think about this? Uh, yeah, I hate you all, guys. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't even, if you notice, I didn't brand my Discord server as Akasha server, I just called it Mimi's place, whatever. Uh, because I really, I mean, it's still Akasha server in the end, but I really didn't even want to bother with people. <laughs> uh, but uh, I kind of had to. Uh, so here I am. Uh, and, you know, I would like people to give me some feature uh, suggestions, something, but it's just all uh, leaderboards, leaderboards, where is Purina, where is I'll hate them. Uh, I, yeah. Um, but uh, overall, I guess it's fine. <laughs> uh, I definitely don't feel that connected to this community, but I was also kind of forced to make this server because um, 
I'm pretty sure otherwise they would just float float the uh, Genshin optimizer. And that's where all the leaderboard questions would be. <laughs> I have to hurt the cats. <laughs> I, I think I totally would have agreed there. I, I think at least every day there has been, there would be a request on the Arcage Optimizer not to, play, not to help them play their game better, not to help build their character better, but to make uh, like a configuration or a multi-target that will get them higher on Akasha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but I, at least I still haven't mentally and emotionally processed uh, this but i guess in terms of in terms of an idealized community you said that you you would much prefer your community to give back to you in terms of not just requests for leaderboards but feature requests or how to improve your uh, your your website uh, what do you think in in terms of in regard to that i uh, yeah i mean um they, uh, there were actually some useful uh, suggestions which I would love to bring up, but uh, I literally pin them, and when I do them, I unpin them from the channel, so I <laughs> just lost my list of things I, I've made. Uh, but there were definitely several suggestions uh, of you know uh, adding some cool stuff, and I actually like adding uh, uh, you know stuff, not leather leaderboards, but stuff like. I recently added that uh, the image distribution thing, mm. uh, which I think is uh, useful. Like obviously not so much when it's like a single Jinchu burst stick, like that just a hundred percent burst image. But for something like Hutao, uh, you can see how it splits between you know everything. Uh, I think that's informative. That's like cool. Uh, like I'm trying to make my website a bit more. Uh, helpful uh, like for example i was asking you uh, to add the substat priority thing uh but you it wasn't it didn't sit right with you no. uh, yeah so i made it myself and now it's here and i personally think it's fine and it's cool uh so yeah uh, so i like to focus more on new features than new new leaderboards maybe if i had a better system for leaderboards like you know instant copy paste multi-target team from genshin optimizer bam done that would be ideal i could just outsource it but um, it's kind of uh, not like that it's very painful to make uh, make them so so they are just uh, being slow yeah, I think uh, I think you touch on a great point there. Is that, is that like not only do we get influences from our community to further our development, but we actually get a lot of influence from each other. I think like the addition RV into Akasha was due to my I guess long winded rants towards some YouTuber about using numbers wrong, which I, I'm definitely glad that uh, Akasha is going that way. Uh, I I think quite a lot of features in optimizer could definitely influence akasha as well as, as you've stated some examples but like the, the whole team sharing thing i think provides a separate dynamic in terms of not only providing people with consistent assumptions towards how they build their character but also providing the context of why you want to build a character that way i can add to that a bit mm -hmm. like you have uh, community and you have minor and major tasks if like a lot of people ask to add uh, the thing you said rv okay let's work on it if there is some feature that people don't know or like um, or yeah if there is feature that uh, people don't know but you know that it could be useful you can start working on it and I think that's how everything has to be done. I think, like, I think another example of this would be like I'll go providing uh, and standardizing us using like the same icons for each like crit, val uh, crit rate, crit damage. Those icons, I think, have been pretty much widely adopted by the community. Yeah, Actually, like back when I made it, like there's just like no way to represent those in icons and i wanted to the guards to have icons uh for them to be like 
language independent. So you could like read a card even if you like even if it's in, in another language. Which I think help happens like the sight reading a lot. You kind of reminded me about one project that Genshin Devs had and like standard library for the data or something like that, if you remember. Oh yeah. There, there was something, yeah. Think, yeah, a long time ago on the server. Yeah, we did try to create a standardized uh, library or standardized something. I think, I think he, at least on the Genshin Optimizer, uh, Optimizer side, we realized that it was too much of a limitation on our current calculation engine. Uh, with our new calculation engine, we could actually... I mean, we keep promising this, this, and we, we it's, it, has, it won't surface until probably likely the end of this year at the very minimum. But uh, I think we could standardize calculation once uh, the, the dream is realized. And then the thing is, like this thing, thing about this, like you provide a library that anyone can, can like calculate the damage using like a specific like formula, uh, formula, like language, I guess I don't know or something. Mm -hmm. Like okay, now you can compute the damage on your side uh, or like do stuff. So like, what is the incentive? Like the Genshin optimizer already does that. Just go to Genshin optimizer. So like, uh, we end up kind of like duplicating features probably in some, in some way, but like we need to somehow set our specific platform uh, apart. Mm. And that is also like a thing I really like think a lot about. Like I would, I like, I would add a feature, right? Why would people, like, why would people use my site instead of like an optimizer, for example, to calculate damage or like I have a aspirin link. If I, also make it possible to like see your damage on your card that will re require me re-implementing essentially aspirin so then what is what is the point of aspirin uh so it's like it's kind of like i could do that but well, like what's the point <laughs> you make a very good point but what about like interdependencies between our features i know akasha fundamentally depends on data from anka well yeah but like that's the only dependency so if i add features that like calculate damage well akash already does that so just like go on akash it's the same data what if it's in a more shareable format that's in like anka has the, the great shareability optimizer only does the numbers if we could combine I mean, you can, both you, you can you can share akash for example too uh, or like any other bots that just uses the api for example mm. so there's like not a big incentive for me to do like killer features i guess because they could just be elsewhere instead, and I don't really like see what is like very missing from Anka, I guess. Speaking of speaking of shareability, uh, Fred, you added, um, I think you added like received team buffs to the optimizer results, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, I actually found that really useful because when people share screenshots of their configurations of their results, uh, you know, you don't have the context, but now if they just screenshot that you can tell what did they input uh, to get that mm. uh, much quicker like for example i i have tables right and somebody just screenshots a table uh, and without context what's above it what's the url you sometimes couldn't tell which actual leaderboard it was for let's say raven uh, so I actually added like a weapon icon and like uh, something to the table itself, just so when there is a screenshot, there is actually context. Uh, so something similar. Yeah, just off topic, but yeah. No, I'm I'm de I'm definitely glad that you're getting some mileage out of my change. Uh, I think. The and I think we got ads, by the way. Oh, we got ads. Well, uh, I guess more more self promotion, Fanny. I'm I'm I'm. I think adding that feature was. A bit more difficult than imagined, but I'm glad we were able to provide you with the, the I guess, the enough context to make a lot of the debugging stuff easier. I know a lot of like optimizer debugging, but why isn't my character doing the damages in game? is incredibly difficult and nuanced, and I want to, I wanted to try to address that by providing as much context as possible. Yeah, so now they need to match it to Optimizer, they need to match it to in-game, and they need to match it to Akash. <laughs> well, let's... Uh, we still have an ad break of around 30 seconds. Take, take, a, take a break, rest your voices, drink from your beverage, 
and uh, we'll chill for for like 20 seconds and we'll we'll move on to uh we'll move on to the bad and the ugly in terms of uh, genshin developer experience i think that's that's when we actually get on the the uh, primordial couch of complaints <laughs> i think like one thing uh we should have done like from the beginning is build build like a central main thing and we like each work on our own part within this, this thing but we ended up, up like being fragmented more or less there's not a, like a single brand where like a person can go to go to and like get everything i i, I think I... that opinion is influenced by the fact that you you've already solved the problems that you set out to solve i think before you're able to find your solution to these problems you probably aren't able to see the connections between our solutions fair enough, fair enough yeah because remember, like my initial post, uh, like the DN project in the Genshin Dev. Mm -hmm. Remember when, like, we first discussed, like, what Anchor would be. Yeah, I, I don't really remember where it's like Genshin Open Object somewhere, maybe. It yeah, we, like, we tried to the, the we, real DN project. We tried to create like uh, I think this is after the after the the experiment we had with Goba as well, where we, we wanted to to have an open format where. All the developers will be able to kind of communicate on even ground. Yeah, I think like initially what Anchor like wanted to be is a centralized storage that like people would upload their like stuff from scanners to and this kind of stuff. Like that's my initial idea was for it. Uh, and then like all the tools will use like the central API for all the things. But like it ended up not being really required because like the we figure out the showcase and that was like more or less enough that was the missing link for most of the like a lot of the stuff and once we had that uh like there's just like a lot of projects started depending on it like yeah. calculators uh like a lot of discord bots this kind of stuff so like and that was more or less enough and then then you can like it, it still is not useful for optimizer but because it, it's like it's only a small slice of your account uh, it's like really not really useful for optimizer because you have optimizer works best when you just use all your artifacts to optimize but uh, anchor only like provides a slice even you know even if you saved a lot of builds it's not guaranteed that it, like those will contain all of your artifacts so it's still a problem and that part is still unsolved but there's like there's no point in like centralizing anything i think right now because most uh, mostly because like our stacks all are different like you use only front like front end only react mimi uses like react and a back end i have i use svelte kit and like my own back end in in python and it's like all different yeah uh, de definitely i i think i think in terms of your solution with anka i'm very pleased that you found like a middle ground I, I certainly don't want you to like kind of bend yourself backwards to accommodate like all artifacts just for the use case of optimizer uh, for optimizer yeah i agree i've been trying to think about like a solution obviously the solution is to have a back end but like to what end of a back end which i i you know to what end to, to the to the back end <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's definitely a problem that i personally haven't solved but i'm hoping to solve one day uh, I, I see I see a question in chat to all devs. How do you guys handle burnout in development? I, I think this is the good segue. So we'll get to like the, the bad, the, the ugly section within within our um, Genshin dev experience. Uh, so I guess, as I guess for me personally, how do I handle burnout? Uh, I have a bad coping mechanism when I, when I get stressed out, which is that I'm, I'm a bit of a workaholic. So my coping mechanism for burnout is just to work more, which is incredibly stressful on my body and it's like it's it's not being i guess the healthiest relationship i had with in, in terms of being a developer how do you guys uh, deal with burning out in terms of uh developing for uh, the genshin community uh if someone has like any ideas feel free to tell me <laughs> <laughs> i will be i will be glad to find a way <laughs> Uh, my my solution was just explain. like not doing anything for the last year. <laughs> Touching grass. Uh, I guess yeah. Uh, I can tell. It's it's simple for myself. Like 
if if there is some major task that needs to be fixed, I'm gonna do it like uh doesn't matter if I'm tired or if I don't want to do it. My yeah, mind same. will be like this needs to be done. <laughs> and it will be if done. If there's a necessity, you will always do it because it's like a public service. You need to like yes. you need to solve yes. a thing, like a critical thing. But like in terms of like, should I refactor this? Should I add anything new? Uh <laughs> well it just uh if if I feel like uh if I feel like this is like necessary, then I'm gonna fix, add, adjust. Or if someone if, if someone will ask me, like my friend asked me to like add some filters and I was like, hmm, it would be useful for her and it would be useful for everyone else, so I'm gonna add it. And I did. For me oh. it's like uh, when you're under burnout and you think about something in terms of wouldn't it be nice to it never gets done it will never get done I, ha I think I have somewhat of the same perspective I think I have this obsession to solve problems I guess that's like a quintessential engineering thing it's just like you need to find mm -hmm. as long as your mind is settled on a gap that you haven't solved your body regardless of how tired it is will devote energy to the brain to solve it regardless of whether if it's healthy to do so um i i think in terms of like a lot of the burnout within optimizer is the the kind of always the the, the impulse to make this de design a system that's better remake something so it works better accommodates more use cases have more feature and, and i think this kind of like constant feature creep is both a source of burnout, but is also a source of motivation, paradoxically. Yeah, it is kind of like that. Like you think, like you sometimes have a like a really good idea and you get fired up to do it. And like, if you don't start on it, it will just die. And it will like add to the backlog of really nice ideas that we, you will never do. Uh, so like you, ha like if you have an idea, you have to like kind of start either like designing it right, right away or you, I think, will never do it because it's just like you're not focused on it. You're not like living it. Uh, one thing I was like, I was concer not concerned about, but like there's a, an aspect to this. Uh, I am a, like a multi, multi, multi interest guy, I guess. I never like settle on the specific field and just be in it. I just flail around, I guess, and learn a lot of like different stuff. And as long as like, as long as the, as the field provides sufficient, sufficient challenge, it is interesting to do something in it. And once the challenge runs away and you do like the mundane things, you just have to implement features and they don't really pose any like challenge. The, the, the entire field becomes like pretty, pretty like boring to me. So I just start like trying to move on to the next one. But like with Anka, I'm more or less stuck because it's like it's a public service. I have to support it. Like even though I don't really play the game anymore because I already like set myself a like a real hard challenge in the game and I like overcame it. And so the game itself is now, now boring for me. Uh, oh, I'm, well, like, I'm usually okay. like that. So my motivation is usually comes from like, yeah, problem solving or like solving a challenge, I guess. That is interesting. Alga, you reminded me, uh, problem solving, you reminded me when I created, like, a problem myself, maybe, or I don't know how, uh, how to call it, but some of my friends asked me, are you gonna do for September for Star Rail? And I was like, hmm, no, I'm not really interested in that game. And then something sparked inside me and it was like can i build can i build sterile website in less than a month and i did it i learned view three for that i learned it in like a week and it was it was very fun when yeah, i finished I'm, I'm it like fueled I by spite like... fueled by spite huh? yeah yeah i'm like everyone who did this did it like so shit i like i will give myself a challenge of doing this perfect like, like nobody ever did. Oh, so basically, Behoyo implements your features badly. You have motivation to implement it more good. You know, kind of like, but yeah, with like latest stuff, I guess it didn't motivate me that much because like they did the card 
and it's like it's already worse it's less readable so i'm like okay <laughs> i didn't look at anything i just made it yeah um, also there's one thing about burnout like uh you know that i worked with some unreleased data and so one day i was like i'm tired of that like every month the same thing every week i don't want to spend the rest of my life on this i just stopped yes yeah, so and like, everyone else do release do on ember don't break what you only do release data on Ember. Yeah, now yes, I'm just like for unreleased stuff, I'm just using some other API because like people like my UI. So I was like, hmm, maybe just use another API because like, why not? Because that developer was okay and I just implemented it and no, I'm not like, like, hmm. Maybe I'm making structures like for release because like you need to get the data from release and like you need to have structures to get the data. And like that's I, I, the only thing I do. But I for the beta the I Yeah, I'm not like even if you're touching it. Out, I'm if not you're interested about something. <laughs> oh sorry. Wait. <laughs> like we keep talking over each other. I think it's the Sorry, the sorry. <laughs> No, like, just finish your thought. Uh, like, I'm not really interested in Genshin. I'm, inter I'm interested in working on stuff, helping people. And, like, I just, I just tired of working with Beta. And that's it. So because and if someone... The PI, you found, like, the solution to your problem. Like, if you're burned out, yeah. just, you, like, just find someone who isn't and steal their data. <laughs> not still take uh, I mean honestly <laughs> every time I interact with Dinbreath which is probably the prominent data mine provider in the community he seems tired I think anytime anyone has interacted with him he seems to be constantly rewriting the, yeah. part of his pipeline he seems to be constantly tired of having to support it the issue is that there is kind of no competition there so no one is there to put him out of his misery no, like there is people are like dumping excels themselves but like dim breath is just like he's there he provides it so there's no like reason for mm. anyone else to like take over like and he kind of like enjoys it more or less i know he like sends the blob i think he's a martyr uh, <laughs> for sure i, I think he's like he's just on like an m <laughs> well no i think he's more like he thinks i think he's more like a and this is a problem with a lot of, not a problem, but this is a habit of a lot of developers to kind of virtue signal like, oh, I work so hard on this, and not because I have to, it's because I want to. And then they end up trying to convince themselves that's how, that's how they should work, which is just kind of going to like a bad feedback loop of constantly burning out. But, but I, think, I think this inertial kind of, this is how engineers show off by like how, how little sleep you've done, how, how much work you've done in, your, in like 18 hours or something ridiculous. And it's just this constant one-upmanship due to either insecurity or just bad habits. I'll have to ask you, Fred, about the source for this uh, background of yours right now. I, it's really fascinating. I... Just DM me, okay? <laughs> sure. I don't like how they did some of the animation warping, but if you, if you I guess, come at it from like a five-yard or five-yard glance, it's not too bad. Um... Uh, I, I guess another thing about like the, the Genshin developer experience is sure you get a lot of like reward for being someone who provides for the community and someone who um I, I guess someone who kind of work independently, but it, it almost feels like there's no community support from uh, the Genshin side officially. Uh, I th I think uh, I, I think. All of us at one point were part of the the content provider, or sorry, the the content the creator server, where, where they were kind of uh, awarding us with like a, a, a subsequent amount of uh, primo gems every month. But uh, that program has seemed to have died out, and there just seems to be no support from uh, I guess the, the whole side in terms of 
uh us us kind of like almost non-conventional content creators we're not really like social media uh, influencers we're just people who makes websites and people happen to use them what what are your perspectives on that mm, i don't think i have a well formulated take maybe mimi uh i actually never was part of the cc uh program uh it actually shut down literally as i released the website all oh, right yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. I was like, wait, how do I get to the CC thing? And <laughs> oh, suddenly it turns out you can't. Um, <laughs> I know you, Fred, uh, you were a part of, like your team was receiving some uh, Primo Jams. Uh, so that, um, I guess it's, uh, it's uh, like your issue <laughs> for sure. Uh, as for me, uh, yeah, I mean, these rebars aren't really like, uh, they are some motivation, right? Uh, that's for sure. But I think that's all they are because it's not like you're being paid really. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how, man, how, man, how much you were given, but like, surely it's, you know. Mm, I, like the, re the rewards is not really like a thing that motivates you in this case. It's, it's definitely like, not enough to I be think, a, a motivational. Like I, I don't think like it even made sense to have this program honestly uh like initially it just was like you have to like do this and you are in the program and they give a bit pretty much then it like reformed a, a bit and they just like kept raising the standards for it until it became just like okay we compensate content creators that like are suffi sufficiently large and that's it uh project managers were like left in the dust more or less without any like compensation and stuff but it kind of makes sense maybe because uh, it's like you did get Prima gems, but you didn't really need them because at that point when you're like working on a large project, you don't really need Prima gems at all. Like you don't play the game. I think at that point uh, I wasn't like, even playing the game. Someone else was piloting my account. So they were claiming yeah, the yeah. Primo gems for me. Yeah, and like the thing about this is like you don't really need the program to compensate you for doing work. You need the program to be able to facilitate like communication to be able to make your work easier. So you're not like not like burned out. Like Prima gems don't prevent me being from being tired. Like some resources or some like some communication will make me spend like less thought power, I guess. But the program was never that. It was like a small hub, and nobody really talked there either. Uh, in terms of like interaction and like all all of our like most of our collaboration was on the Genshin Dev, Dev server, not in the community program. Well, I have because to admit, there it felt I like. I coffee... felt like okay, we're watching us. It's, it wasn't comfort comfortable at all. So, I I did like I did find a lot of the members of Genshin Dev community Discord from their content creator Discord. I think the the way in which they structured it wasn't conducive for collaboration or being uh, us being like creative. It wasn't a hub. It was just like a registry, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think this kind of leads to, into like one of the main points I had. It's that like as like I think fundamentally we identify our, ourselves as like content creators for Miho uh, for like Genshin up uh, Genshin Impact. However, it feels like we're kind of like a, a second class citizen in that regard. We're like us as like website or app makers tend to kind of have to almost do double the work. We both have to create the website and then we have to market it ourselves and then we have to do 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 the social separately. So so like it it, it almost like feels like even worse. You do it's double like the work for, because mm -hmm, go for you it. Sometimes feel like an adversary uh, instead of like someone who is like doing content for Genshin. Mm. You feel like someone who does content against Genshin. Because like okay, I am competing with Hoyle Lab. I am competing like with this new bot that they released for Honkai Star Rail. I am competing like so you feel like you're not like doing work for them even. But rather that you do the work against them. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, go for it. Go for it. Uh, for me. Uh, oh, oh wait. Who? Who? Yeah, there were three people who started talking. Uh, uh, I guess I just want to quickly say that. Uh, and with me, it's against. But for example, I came from direct directly from uh, uh, Destiny Two. 
and they had open API for literally everything. And while you could meme on them that they couldn't make, you know, like loadout or something, the community literally made loadouts for them. Was, there were applications where you can change all of your weapons, armors, everything with one click. Uh, if you had like, you know, uh, API like that, like you could work for Mihoyo in a way, but yeah, it's just not happening. Yeah, it's like they, they're more or less like missing out on the large chunk of like extremely dedicated people that will like make everything like miles better than any paid position in a, com in a company would be because they will spend like way more time and they will themselves just grab more people to help them and you will have all the tools you have without any need to like spend really the information you just give the data and it just flourishes uh but yeah that's not the thing with me Hoyo. yeah it's it's almost a point of uh you you guys can see or i guess the viewers can see how much we have done without the support of like official support or even like formalized uh, application interfaces imagine what we can do if we were actually given the tools to to be able to create content i probably wouldn't exist honestly anchor wouldn't exist because like it solved the problem uh and like if they had an api there wouldn't be a problem so anchor would just not exist but then you could get so to like... a lot of the stuff that you do want to get to, right? The issue is that we have this roadblock where when we when we want to get to a point of a solution, we have to resolve our roadblocks ahead. I feel like a lot yeah. of the inability to access data, lack of support, lack of visibility, lack of you know any sort of promotion makes it so that we're literally five steps behind. Like, like, for example, I think, I think we're kind of like the lucky group in the sense that the community was able to share our tools. We didn't do too much marketing, but I think at the beginning of Genshin Optimizer, it was basically me joining every Genshin main server, finding some sort of like self-promotion channel, say, hey, do you mind find a moderator and say, hey, do you mind putting my website link in here? And like, I, mm -hmm. I got extremely lucky that Optimizer is pretty much like marketing itself. Due to, yeah, I, I think, guess. like, for me, I didn't do any of that even. Like, Shinshin just marketed itself. It's just, like, it's just word of, mouth, word of mouth. As soon as you do something useful and you give it to, like, one person, it just spreads, like... One one thing, like, about Genshin community is I find interesting. Uh, things spread really fast compared to, like, other stuff. So if something, like, provides value, it spreads, like, in, almost immediately. Yeah, that's it's it's so weird for a single player game to have this like crazy social network behind it. Yeah, yeah. it's even crazier you know, because like, you don't they even, didn't even see use like ninety percent of it because not everyone is in Discord. They just like private chats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even from the Discord themselves, I think people are incredibly like able to share all of these things. Um, can I add a bit about rewards? Sure, sure, please. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Prima Gems is just a, a game currency. Mm -hmm. Like, if you give it to me, okay, I'm happy, but maybe, like, I'm not playing the game. The thing that I want is to be highlighted. Highlighted as a content creator, as a developer. Like, so developers will say, like, look, this person created a database. Like, uh, it updated, it updates, uh, praise to this person, <laughs> it would be nice. And like, connect other people who may contribute to me. Like, uh, gems, they can, they can always send you gems, it's in-game currency. But to highlight you, it's other thing. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, as a as, uh, content creator, it would be really nice not to feel like a second class second class citizen and I, I totally agree with you i think we we had to form our own community that support each other simply because there's yes. no external support and sometimes it feels like there's negative support when like dmcas happen or it's inherently things breaking our system that didn't need to be broken in the first place um uh, i think in terms of like the, the actual reward, I agree, Primo Gems is as a fiat currency for most of us without, uh, who barely play Genshin anymore. It literally means nothing. Support is probably the, the number one thing we want. Uh, People. I think, uh, let's, let's even like go one layer above. I don't think Genshin Optimizer is 
profitable or even f feasible as like a as a way to to create i i think uh, right now i think when i calculated the uh, genshin optimizer account for less than three percent of my income but i it, it uses up more than 40 percent of my free time sorry yeah, more than 40 like percent of my time is not prima gems it's time yeah so the currency themselves isn't isn't prima gem is it is literally time time to time that we're sacrificing to make these 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 content I, I i don't know we're, about we're kind of like saving time of people i guess by like optimizing their gameplay and stuff uh, sure uh, that's what i believe yeah, but like, I, that's how i justify my time the issue is that yeah. my time is not justified in like purely yep. selfish perspective like I, I will be fully transparent making money i haven't made too much money with sketch and optimizer the, the patreon maybe makes like a thousand to two thousand dollars the advertisements I recently add to the website makes less than like around like five dollars a day. I I I've I've been streaming on Twitch for over a year and a half, and I I've only able to cash out on the limited amount like last last week or something like that. Ridiculous. Like I've I'm making I like there there is there's no way that I could recoup the amount of time I've spent on this thing. In any logical sense, I'm, for me, like the main, I guess, uh, justification for the time spent is just learning. I've learned so much about like infrastructure management and stuff, so like that is valuable, I guess. Oh, ouch! Yeah, yeah, I, I, I learned a lot. Hmm. I think I think we've all learned a lot. But I think I'm at a point of optimizer where I'm I'm not really learning anything to like new or nuanced. I'm only spending yep. the time to maintain it. Yep, same. Uh, in terms of educational value, I think I've spent it, uh, most of it on optimizer development so far. The only di the only like new thing would be to make a backend, but the system itself is just so complicated that the overhead of me maintaining the system prevents me from learning any new system. It's it's kind of like a weird chicken and egg situation. I have I have so much ambition to do more with it, but I don't have the time or scalability to make it better. Right. Like time could be resolved by just more people helping, but like it, it is hard to find people who like are similarly insane, I guess. Reliable. To spend their time as well. Well, I think for me, at least with Optimizer, we, we do, our code is open source. The contributions is relatively easy. But in terms of contribution, I'm saying things like, oh, add a button here or change the styling of this button here. It can never be like a complicated system design. Oh, add. Oops. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's calm down. Let's, 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 let's calm down from this momentum. Take it's a hell. break. It's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> you know, have, have your panic attack, but mute your mic. <laughs> we have 45 seconds to go. I'm wondering, like, do I not have ads because I have ad block, or do I not have ads because I live in a third world country that doesn't have ads on Twitch? I don't know. I still have not figured out how many people are getting ads. I know my ad block does not work for Twitch ads, but again, you might just be like either you have VPN or like in a country where ads aren't like you're not worth advertise to. I literally had an ad when I joined this this stream <laughs> on Twitch. Got him. Got got that zero point two cents. Actually, I don't think I make money off ad. I think I only make uh, money off subscriptions, and that's why it's been so hard getting to a point where we cash out on Twitch. And the, the limit's only a hundred dollars. So, so over over like almost two years, I've made like slightly more than a hundred dollars. <laughs> Right. 
Oh my god, it's so depressing. It's also like, it's, it's, it's so, like, I've been thinking right now, it's so hard to, like, monetize Genshin Optimizer in any way. Yeah. Like, the only reason I have, like, a more or less successful Patreon is because the feature was unique. It was not available, like, anyone anywhere else. And I just, like, uh, provided people, like, beta access for Patreon. Mm -hmm. And once the beta access ended, I can, like, so far, I can only provide, like, one custom art to be saved on the server. Well, uh, oh, there's not really much I can give. Take, take a note from Reddit. I start charging, <laughs> charging people absorbent prices for using your API. <laughs> no, no, no. Take a page from Reddit and start charging people to put like shit emojis over people's bills. <laughs> oh, oh like, buy buy Reddit gold, buy Anchor gold, and put it on like on a, on a, on a build. <laughs> I was actually what? thinking of like expanding like the social features, be able to like have a like a posts on your own profile where you can like write a post and attach your builds as like as a team or something. What were you gonna say, Anon? Uh, I'll go. Let's say that like you had to keep your VPS somehow, like because. Uh, Anka, it just uh, like it needs to store the data, and you need to pay. You need to pay for your pretty expensive server, I guess. To like yeah, but like the, the amount of like I've I've predicted this, so I like I went into the whole the whole project with this in mind that I would mm -hmm. need some amount of like income to be able to justify hosting the whole thing publicly. Uh, and right, like you. Like I, I set a Patreon, like I, I just promised like okay, you, you will get beta features earlier. You will like uh Honkai beta, beta testing was also like behind Patreon for a while. The initial UID rollout was also behind like the Patreon. You like you would subscribe and message me UID and like I would like whitelist you. Uh but like beyond that, uh I I really hate ads. I really, really like dislike putting them because not only you subject users to like all kinds of garbage. But you also have to do all these like notices and stuff that like oh like we have cookies we have like this like data collection you have to agree to it uh, and beyond all of that you also need to integrate the ads into your design and now your lay layout not only is const constrained by the shit ton of like dimensionality that the Genshin has. You also your layout is also constrained by the fact that you need to show ads. Wait a minute! I, I, I was I like, think... I was just like, screw that, screw that. I just like went like, okay, Patreon, and I'll just I just like push. Did you, were you trying to imply something there? No. Okay. But this like this this is a problem. Like it. I agree. I'm pretty sure if I put ads on Anka, like judging from what Mimi said about like his ads on Akasha. I think he's like earning more than me uh, from like Patreon. Mm. So, so like my Patreon and he's he's earning more from ads. But like I still don't want to do ads. Like I don't mind him uh, earning from Akasha because it's like way more complicated and stuff. Well, I think uh, in terms of comparisons, I think Mimi's ads on his website by comparison, it's slightly more invasive. They it's, are, yeah. They're, they're, like, they're like full page ads sometimes. Yeah. But like if it pays for his time, like that's fine. Yeah, he deserves that. I, I'm glad yeah, that he found like, the nobody space. else pays. Pay, nobody else pays for <laughs> his time. So like, uh, uh, like it's just like my own thing. Like I limit my theoretical uh, base of yacht on purpose. I just like refuse to make more money than is is needed to like support me. I guess. Because I don't think it's a base of yacht. I think it's more like, I think it's more like a boat you craft in Minecraft. About the right size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if I put ads on Anchor, like, I have, like, let me check. Cloudflare. Uh, how many unique users do I have? Actually, not unique users, page views, I guess. Well, that doesn't matter. I think, I think, like, a tremendous number, especially with the, given the demographic of people who use websites like this, tremendous amount of them actually use, like, ad blocks. Actually, you know what would be really fun? Not because... really, no. Because Optimizer does have fake ads, because <laughs> I, I, I thought it was fun to do Do you this. have the metrics for them? I don't have the metrics for them, but I, but I think it would be funny if I could like use Google Analytics 
determine. Yeah, because you, you use Google Tag Manager to like see how many people see your fake ads instead of like the real ones. That will be funny to see. That will be funny. Yeah, yeah like I have, I have. Uh, oh shit! So like in thirty days, uh, three hundred million websites was made to my my website, like in total. That doesn't include like just page reviews or something. It's like all like resources, images, uh, like API, everything. But for unique visitors, it's like 2.1 million unique visitors in 30 days. So I think I will probably like make gigabank for if I put ads. But I like, no. Uh, yeah, I, I think can... unique visitors for me in 30 days is uh, 400,000. So that's... Uh... You said how many, how many on you? Three million? Damn. Yeah, because like my like coverage is like way less specialized than yours. So I just have like the general appeal, I guess, of the thing. People just like look up their UIDs. Yeah, as for the requests, uh, entire Akasha, all the images are on your CDN. So if yeah. somebody presses on the builds, he, he literally loads uh, how many? 20 times. Uh, another like there is artifacts there is weapons there is you know the... for each card there's about like 12 requests to the cdm three talents uh, no more three talents six constellations uh one weapon uh five artifacts one splash image yeah i have ads on my website but i adapted them nice enough so like if you're gonna use you block you're just going to have a clean website, literally. Yeah, I like how like, the ads are on, on Ember. It's like they're not that like annoying, I guess. Like, my main pro also has like pretty nicely positioned ads, I think. Like, you see the main content, and that's main. Yep. I just like hate accommodating for ads. They, like, they're like very annoying rectangles that you just don't know where, where to fit, so... Yeah, I How hate adding ads. Have, we have like such limited space on Optimizer. Adding ads was like actually super, super struggle. Yeah. And then we get people... You just, like, you just put them around, basically. You cannot integrate them anywhere. Yeah, having above the fold integrated content ads, having space for them is, is very difficult. And then you mm -hmm. get people who like specifically block even like the, the Optimizer ads, and they can, they're confused. Like, why is there an empty spot? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder where could we have put something there. I've checked. Uh, Mimi, how many like registered sign signed in users do you have on Akasha? Uh, I mean, technically, I don't have accounts, right? I just authenticate. Yeah, yeah, but you like, how your... many authentications do you have, like a stat? Yeah, well, let's see. Like, uh, so I'm literally turning was... on my database interface and <laughs> not very. Yep, same, same. Spinning uh, up the systems, boys. On, on my on my side, it's like two. Uh, actually, well, it's it hit two hundred fifty thousand users. Uh, okay, like so registered let me accounts. See, if I go by sessions, I suppose I should get all of them that have a provider. Okay, let's see how many it will be. Session cookie user. Blah, blah. It might take me a while, so. Okay. Oh, what did we? Where were we actually? What are we discussing? Like we started discussing ads. Uh, we were in like in the in the bad and the ugly session, right? Yeah. And turns out I'm really bad at MongoDB queries. The hell do I do this? <laughs> not null, no, not equal. Da, da, da. Exists, maybe. Now, what did we cover? I think like we covered. More... I think we covered enough. I, at least I think the entire content here. Oh, I guess. Uh, I think we receiving feedback. We definitely said stuff about that. 
lack of contributors burnout disinterest in the game but he's going for the website yeah we've definitely covered that oh my gosh did, did we write did we write this this is depressing um <laughs> it's like uh, we i'm looking at the like talking points uh document like the good three points the bad six points the ugly six points <laughs> and like with with sub points uh, that's funny oh my gosh it's 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 pretty bad <laughs> But yeah, I think I think we've touched upon every topic here. So I think uh, at least we could have some time for free discussion. Whatever you want to talk about, any anything that you like, even Lucy related to like coding or development. And I think you know it's this this is probably a good time for viewers at home to start asking your questions as well. Because I know at the beginning we we, we had a lot of topics to cover. We didn't necessarily get to all your questions. I apologize. I, I saw a lot of them. I was trying to wait for a time to interject and then it just never came because we just keep going on tangents. So if if there, you have any questions and you're still you're still awake and not not fall into a comatose state from all the programmer talk, feel free to to ask your questions. Oh, my query finally worked. Uh, looks like 36,000 people authenticated into Akasha. Nice. That's quite a lot. I can yeah. check now. I think according 20, to my 20, analytics, it, it's around like 40,000 people that use this uh, uh, optimizer monthly. What was the first app I programmed? First app I ever programmed that would be like in grade ten computer science class in high school. We were writing Java games in Greenfoot, which is like a very sim uh, simplified uh, game engine. I can't remember what what was the implementation. It was probably like Boys or or like Conway's Game of Life or something simple. Mine, my, my, like my first thing. I guess like the first app specifically for like made for you. Oh, banner me. generator was like Sick. the other banner generator. Yeah. Turn on the dra drama mode. There's a drama mode. Yeah. yeah. Uh, disable the like the black thing, the black uh, dark theme thing. Okay. Where's it the ruins everything? Where's the drama mode? Oh, here this. In the layer. In the, oh in the yeah, layers. there it is. Oh yo, it actually floats. Yeah. It's oh, like, that's fucking it, sick. It, 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 it's a CSS transform thing, like hackery. I mean, yes, it is, but like, it's it's it matches to the background. This is sick. <laughs> Why did you get into Genshin Dev? You could have just kept going with this. I sold it. You I sold it to Need School. I sold it to Need School Shoes website uh, a while ago because I needed the money. Ah. Uh... And then the website died like two years ago. So there's like a recreation project. Yeah. Like open source. Another question about your desktop saying insanely good. Oh, that's that's because I realized early on that I I would have nothing in, happening in the background, so I downloaded like a ton of like Genshin wallpaper from from Wallpaper Engine, and because I'm not connected to Steam, I can't link any of them to anyone yet. Uh, but I think. People who's messaging on like my Discord or who has DM me about the pictures, I'll get to sending the source of those pictures to you. I've actually made a like wallpaper engine like thing uh, at one point. It is like a Kaguya edit. I think it's like on, on wallpaper engine because somebody somebody put it there because I I just did it as an like as an edit as a loop, but it worked pretty good as a wallpaper. Yeah. For for ZZZ, uh, we we will need to see if it has any social features because they usually add social features only on release, and we have no information at this point. Like if in beta they will even have something like uh, Honkai and Genshin. Mm -hmm. If they will, then we will we will surely like add ZZZ, and I will need to like design a card in record time. Yeah, whether we make an optimizer for any game really depends on whether we get enough developers to support it. 
I think for uh, that and like, does it like even make sense within the community? right? Does it make sense? Does it have a TC community? Does it have like well defined formulas? Does it make sense to uh, to optimize? I mean, we build a very generalized engine, so it's we will be ashamed to over engineer for just one game. The issue is that yeah. we just don't have the scalability in terms of staffing to create more. Uh, how does it feel basically monopolizing part of the utility aspect of Genshin? No way to improve character cards. Enka is already a top dog. Akasha is the leaderboard website. There's no reason to be another Amber. There's a better Paimon. There's, um, <laughs> there's no more Genshin Optimizer. How does it feel I mean, to I be the top dogs? Sorry. I think that's uh, that's not quite how it works. I mean, um, I feel like uh, there is Genshin optimizer. Uh, you know, um, uh, I forgot the English word, but uh, competition. Uh, I believe a lot of people are using different tools, and because they find optimizers maybe barrier to entry uh, too difficult, they literally just use something else. Yeah, and... I agree because like optimizers for optimizing your artifacts, but like it has a calculator. But I like Aspirin more because of like ease of use. So all my TC for Amber, for example, I did in Aspirin instead of Genshin optimizer. So there is different things. Yeah, and as for Akasha, uh, I believe uh, although they started after I made mine, uh, I believe there is like actually four different websites with leaderboards right now. Uh, Didn't they like obviously... just scrape your data or? Uh, I'm sure some of them did. Uh, although, from what I've seen, they were using uh, their own uh, rankings. So, like, they didn't scrape my leaderboards. They just made mm. their own assumptions. Uh, which, I think they are dog shit. <laughs> but, but obviously, I, mean, I think in terms of user bias. base, you're still at the top, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's one... I don't know it's Chinese or what is it? What is it? I don't know if the player even plays Genshin, but he has like weapons, mm -hmm. uh, like you know, just weapon display, right? He has refinements from zero to four instead of uh, one to five, oh. <laughs> and it just shows yeah, up like, like, like that is in the API, yeah. And it was never fixed for like a year now, and it's like okay, well, uh, that's, I mean, the, that's the problem. Like a lot of these websites are just made to basically like. I guess like take a chunk of the pie and just have ads, but like they don't really care about the community that much. That's why they're not really widely used because they're like they feel distant. They feel like ma they're made by like a corporation that does not care. Sometimes. Yeah, but the point uh, is, uh, definitely somebody could just come and make another Akasha. I don't think that's a problem because uh, Algo provides a very nice API, and anyone can. What do if it. I don't give them an API? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, then you are monopolizing. That's then the I mean, question. I mean, yeah. like at this point, like I think for me, the only like the mo monopoly question is only valid for me because I am the monopoly. Like even Mihoyo don't like have the monopoly on what I have. Yeah. They don't have like nobody else has the access to showcase. Literally yeah. nobody else. And like I yeah, just I provided think for Amber free, also so. has definitely competition. And I would say Amber is the competitor to others more even. Yep. I just uh, do what I do. I don't mind other doing what they do. It's I still my have some UI of... issues with your website. Like if you fix them or change them, I would probably use your website more. But yeah, as side note. Yeah, I guess just that... use what they like. I guess. Also, I don't get it. Make your localization and all of the websites i i hate it when i just type eula or hutao in the google and i just want you know amber's character thing and what pops up is like either their character card or their tcg card or french language constellation sub page like, i can explain i can explain is that <laughs> defend true? yourself defend. So, uh one I don't know how to call them, but they're co they're been called remove your media. They DMCA literally like almost all my pages. Like I understand if you want to like Google DMCA uh, pages with unreleased characters, but they like did to 
all the characters like all like mostly all the pages and it's sad like before it was all right you just google like uh AUO amber and you get like the main page for the amber uh, for you now it's i messy. would argue if you if you google eula amber you'll get different things yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah i get that but yes. before it was all right but then like i got this dmca stuff uh, like for google and it messed up everything but you like you don't need to google anything just go to amber.top just counter okay you have search and boom i have an anecdote about this uh i'm like sitting there hetzner sends me an, a very like very alarming email like oh you've been reported uh like uh, there's like a claim on your website uh and like the claim states that like blah, blah blah remove your media blah, blah blah we need you to like remove these pages and like these pages is just one page and it's just like the website domain and i'm like and the hetzner is, hetzner is like oh you need to remove the site from our servers or we're like we're terminate your account and stuff and they're like like oh, oh, oh scared and like i'm just looking at it and like are you like are you stupid or something <laughs> like Remove Your Media is, like, as a company that, like, violates DMCA so hard. Yeah. Like, they, they don't provide the proof that they actually, like, have any legal relationship to MiHoYo in any way when they file DMCA. Uh, they do not specify the assets that they actually want removed. They specify, like, random URLs. You cannot, like, verify. The, the um, complaint they sent was, like, sent from, a, like, a, a mail, mail server that did not pass the mail security features. It was, like, just you would you couldn't prove that it came from like the server and i just like i just wrote like i guess like 15 paragraphs back to hetzner like like just explaining how dumb they are to like listen to these complaints and they're like oh yeah we see and just like they just dropped the complaint it's so sketchy yeah yeah that is really sketchy well they, like, it's, they it's a good thing that like i know the legal framework about this I was like, okay, like I will remove like my front page has like a star rail logo on on one of the buttons. I just like blurred it. So if you like were wondering why the star rail button is blurred, that's because of this. Like I <laughs> like I found one asset that could belong. The DMCA, by the way, was for Hong Kai specifically. And, like I found one asset that you might be like uh, angry about. Like I removed it. So like whatever. But the rest of it is like just non-enforceable so uh, whatever they're just using bots to scrap every page every link and i guess they just uh picked up your link somehow and you got caught yeah. it's, it's and like, just like mass produced dmca it's, and like there was like a whole scandal by the way on the like on this on the cis side of things about stalker uh stalker 2 and uh, what happened, basically, a random guy, like a, a, sco a school, like a uh, guy in school, went, like, on a rampage. He, like, infiltrated the stalker, like, developers and stuff. Uh, he had access to, like, their e emails. So he was filing, like, a shit ton of DMCAs with, like, questionable proof for all of the articles that, like, wrote about stalker or, like, discussed stalker. And it was, like, a whole, like, PR nightmare just caused by one guy just bending over all those corporations because they just blindly blindly respond to DMCAs. And he, like, caused a shit ton of damage. Your press, it's, it's, uh, such a, it's such a stupid system. I just noticed, like, actually, a chatter noticed that uh, you mistyped uh, Amber. Yeah. Oh, I and mistyped it? Oh, my goodness. Someone... Somebody actually visited uh, some scam website. Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I am terribly and sorry. I there, you block origin just started shouting like, "What are you doing here? Well, watch out! Watch out! Don't enter this website!" Oh, it's like, what it's the just, hell? It's just the domain in parking. I see. Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's. Sorry, I I, I kind of lost track of the conversation, but let's let's start answering some other questions in chat before we have to screw up too far. Um, the fact that someone can make another. Well, our website doesn't mean that they'll be recognizable. Um, it's just the utility they provide. Um, I I mean there are like versions of Genshin Optimizer out there. It's just how well maintained they are. I know, 
I know there's a version of Genshin Optimizer with a red theme uh, that's maintained by One Shen Funeral Parlor that has like content that's not on like the official Genshin Optimizer. But I don't think any of these like I guess I don't I don't want to call them copycats, but I guess variants will ever trump the official optimizer. Um what do you guys think in terms of what if what if tomorrow there's a equally competent website that does pretty much exactly what you do? Well, there are only two ways to deal with this. You either roll over and die or you just start working harder. <laughs> Wait, what was the question? I was like, I, I just pieced out. Oh, uh, the question is, what What if, say say tomorrow, somebody made like another Enka that does pretty much exactly what you do. How will you handle this? Uh, I am very arrogant. I believe that my designs are the best and anything they do will be inferior. But BVOS, baby. Uh, but like, uh, I don't know. Um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Nothing, nothing. Let's sleep no, no, no. What I what I don't quote you on, <laughs> I, I will watch it in the vod, I guess. Uh, the like the thing is like the, I think the only, I guess, feasible, uh, competition I would have is if, like, actual Mihoya do will do something, themselves, but so far they only did like. Uh, only your cards and Hoya Lab, so it doesn't really compete with me. Uh, they did a bot that also doesn't really compete with me. It competes like with bot developers who use Anka API. But then again, like the card design is really unwieldy. I don't like it at all. Like it's barely readable at small size. Uh, so like I don't know. I think the only competition will be from Mihoya, and depending on, on what they do, it will probably be scuffed. So it, I will still have my like market share. I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I love how you assume that if Mihoyo makes something, it will be scuffed. I mean, it, it was the modus of operandi for like the most... I think the only thing they did and improved on it is the community map. Uh, let's move on to Otherwise, the... Otherwise, yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's move on to the next question. Is there a place for this kind of shared Genshin dev talk? Um, I didn't tell uh, about competition. Wait. Uh, uh, Can I... I... Wait, what? Sorry. Uh, can I tell a, a, a bit about competition? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, it depends. Many people use my API for their stuff. I don't think that they're going to rewrite, rewrite their stuff for another person's API. And depends, like, if they will have API. And also, like, they need to get known and like to get known you need to spread what you done and it's it could be complicated so i i, I won't like i wouldn't even look but also the thing is like <sighs> i guess so yeah yeah i like ultimately agree more or less this is han who's han oh no my 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 terrible associations with name has has embarrassed me. Uh, uh, sorry. Let's let's go back up to the backlog of questions. Uh, is there a place for this kind of shared Genshin Dev talk? No, because this is the this is kind of the first episode of us trying out this format. I think quite a lot of times we don't get this kind of like therapeutic couch session of us just talking about like our our um, pains and uh, experiences with development and I think at least I'm interested in keeping this format going I don't know about the rest of you have you gotten value out of this have I gotten what value, value. like do you enjoy this have you gotten enough dopamine to think I will appear on the next episode um who is Han by the way I not like I'd leave him alone poor guy <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so I don't, I don't know your things. people. Like. I'm thinking how many hands do I know in my in my life? Um But yeah, this this is kind of just the, the introduction episode to I guess a round table format podcast that we might keep going. Uh, am I planning to put this VOD on YouTube? I am. We got we got a I was I was trying to like dual stream on YouTube. 
I clicked it today and you, it prevented me from streaming for the next 24 hours. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, and now, now I scroll down to the part where I'm sc scamming people by spelling the title wrong. <laughs> oh no, not like this. Worst nightmare scenario, surely. Uh, what program do you use to code? Oh yeah, we haven't got touched this. This this will be contentious. Wait, what? why are you reading? I'm I'm, I'm oh you you're I'm, catching on the backlog. That's, I'm catching that's up on the backlog. There's too much so tangents. I, that's why I want to get to it really fast. Um, I use VS Code. What about the rest of you? I used Sublime for a for a long time. Then I shifted off to VS Code as well. I use yeah. VS Code, and that's it. Yeah, so it turns out it's really boring because I use VS Code as well. Are you capable of stopping this ad that's gonna stop us from talking soon? Well, it starts in two minutes, so we just, we're just gonna okay. hurry up talking for the next two minutes, then we can chill. Yeah, I think the, the bigger question would be like extensions or something, but I don't know if that's what people care about, to be honest, because I'm sure our extensions in VS Code are completely different and our setup is completely different, even if we use the same tool yeah. uh right okay the better question is which one of you guys use vs code pets oh do oh, i have it. do i have it here where's my vs code pets what about yeah, VS code I, you, I want amber walking on my uh, terminal oh my oh, gosh right right i want to like uh, like you see the fox right uh at some point i wanted to like spend effort to make like animated sprites uh and like so you could grab it from the footer and you could like r drag it around the side and it will like jump around and uh, like do stuff. But like I never got to it. <laughs> because like the, oh, the cool. most of the ideas I had with the side was just like to make it cozier. It's actually um, pretty simple to make now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I like I had the whole like uh, layout of it, like the state machine and like the uh, like element detection so it can like jump on things and stuff. But then I okay, like, I'm gonna to, make like, Akasha like, mask draw... we will make them fight. <laughs> I've seen a website yeah. uh, that was a very cool dev experiment somebody made where he could uh, open several different windows, uh, like Firefox, and yeah, a yeah. singular website could sync uh, data across them. So you could have one canvas split into so many canvas yeah, yeah, with yeah, like yeah. relative uh, uh, coordinates. So we, we could make this fight happen, like, you know, Akasha on one side just, and Kandela. Just connect to a WebSocket, yeah, and just make them jump from one thing to another. Oh, uh, I, think I, I forgot uh, to tell everyone ads. the ads have started. We should we should chill for twenty seconds. And twenty second break. I think the reason why I shifted from Sublime to VS Code is because like I started using Svelte and the LSP was pretty garbage on uh, Sublime. I want so I my VS code. VS code. I want my VS Code to be fast and not to die because. Sometimes it just dies. Like I, I open it. I try to run my Python script, and like it doesn't want to, or my extensions just crashed. No, I wanted, I wanted to leave. I found actually. Actually, wait, wait. Uh, I didn't wait. wait another this. ad. Oh my I god, use, Bezos, you've gone uh, too far. <laughs> uh, I mentioned VS Code as my like code editor, but like it's not fully true because I only use it for front end. Wait, but you have a separate editor for your backend? For backend, I use PyCharm because oh. the like the like it's free the community edition and it's like really good the debugging capabilities and all this stuff it's like it's pretty pretty good and the LSP for Python in VS Code is so unbelievably laggy I like I really dislike it. It's really good. Um. Well, 30 seconds more for VOD, and then I guess we'll resume questions because my backlog is sizable. And there are still new questions coming. Still new questions coming. But I think most of them are comments. VS Code enjoyers. I, I, I go, I'll go from the bottom. If uh, <laughs> if I have a nickel every time you have to fix something, or break, how many nickels would, would they all have? I can count for myself uh, in silence You while you address other questions. Um, uh, well, I'm just waiting for this ad break to end. It looks like the ad break is it, end. It's still not over? Because the second ad played, I think. Um, I guess a relevant question. 
that's highlighted. How much Genshin do you all play on a daily, weekly basis? I think I play like the minimum I can. It depends on how will you define play. A lot of the time, I log into Genshin, and like any time Genshin has for like has a story or a combat or something, I just all tab out, and I would leave Genshin running for like hours while I work on some other programming stuff. So I I will play hours of Genshin per day, but the actual gameplay is probably less than like twenty minutes. What about the rest of you? I don't play any of Mihaly games. I like I played Genshin a long time ago, but like it's not a game for me. I decided to play Doom once, and like no, I don't want to return to Genshin ever again. Uh, I was playing Genshin a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, then Sumeru came, and around that, around that time, I actually stopped. I was just logging for the dailies. Like, I had like a real 100% competition on everything before Sumeru, every single chest uh, and beyond, every single hidden thing. Uh, but then there's Sumeru, and there's like suddenly 0%, 10% exploration. Um, I started playing a bit more recently, probably because I suddenly there is Furina or Lechino. Like I just, you know, I guess it just depends on uh, what the new features are. Uh, if if the new, let's say, five point zero patch will have boring characters, I will probably start playing less again. Uh, but I suppose I'm like the most hardcore player here because like I sometimes do Abyss solo runs and upload a video to YouTube for fun out of that. Uh so yeah. Yeah, like my uh, like you wouldn't want to see my map because like half of it is just like black. <laughs> uh I don't, yeah, I don't really play the game. Like, I built my Amber. That was, like, the goal I set for myself. It is completed. There are too many characters for me to care about now, so I just I just don't play at all. Is this the oh, Alice Workshop you're talking about? Yep, it should be. Yeah, the Yunlo 80. I've never heard about that. What is it's, this? It's, I think it's, like, it's, it's... more Asia-oriented. Oh, whoa. What am I looking at? Ah, I think I've seen it before. Oh yeah, I see. I see. So yeah, they definitely come. Like I think they're trying to solve the same problems, a lot of the same problems I was solving, but like from a different way. It looks like this is an application instead of a website, so they inherently have more calculation power. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a website now. Yeah. I'm not sure how the data is represented here, simply because I am so used to optimizer. Oh, same, same. I just feel lost. Yeah, well, lost in a different way. The computer. Oh, there's Anka integration, so you're part of this. Yeah, yeah, I see them in my API logs, but like I was not sure. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it, it, I guess there's different ways to do things, but I I can't. So this is just an application. Do they do scanning as well? Yeah. So they they I this don't... is the same rounding issue constellation slider for showcase. Conduct. Uh, they actually put a super conduct that. button better than optimizer already. <laughs> you reminded me that as a developer of this website, actually, I think I think the developer used my API. Oh wow! Or I don't know, maybe still using, but I talked with the person behind this website. It looks fine, although probably very not completed or one man project like i just tried I to use the i think, I think it's like scale, of... the image scale and it was like a button on top of it and i just kind of and i think it's like one and a half years old so far uh, for me oh. i like always opened it i immediately got lost in the ui and i just closed it <laughs> oh yo look that's there's the damage funny. card actually that's this is this is the evolution isn't it it's, it's not just the, the artifact and stats but actually the the results yeah it just yeah Represented not very nicely, but it looks so pure and cute. Ranking. I love it. <laughs> it. It's before, before. Uh, I guess we're like jaded veterans looking at this as like the the guys of our predecessor. Eventually, they will be. They will meet their despair. I mean, again, 
like it would it could come back to this question about competition, right? Uh, like if that person were to just polish it up or just get somebody to get the oh, UI experience better, um, like I'm sure he would be an actual competition to all of us, maybe. Like you know, I I honestly think we also. like I welcome competition. I think I I would love to see other people's approach to solving the problem that I've solved because. I don't think I found the right solution. I just found a solution that worked for me at the time. And like, if they okay. could iterate on my design and make it better, you know, for the better, right? Also, what you don't realize, it is already competing. It is already com like competitive, just not in the country you think mm -hmm. it should be competitive. For sure. Because like, for like, for, for example, like for Korea, for example, or like for China, they have their tools that suit them better. So it is already competitive. It just eats your market share in a country that you don't even, even like know the language of. Yep. So like, and that's fine because like people do the tools for like their community where it makes sense. That's the reason I like why like to... most of Asians like bots and stuff. They have scores because people just need scores. Yo, look, they need his, his SSR score. Yo, it is a score yeah. of nine hundred ninety nine. Yeah. I like to. <laughs> there's, there's a thing like even in Russia, I think they ha like they still have the CV brand rod largely for some reason because like the content creators are not like re responsible enough to like actually compute the math <laughs> for for some reason. There's like <laughs> so some streamer made a, like an a browser add-on like a script for Anka to like compute CV <laughs> and put it in the card. And like it's computed wrong as well. <laughs> like I don't know how it's computed, but like the numbers are computed. How? Wrong. It's such a simple formula. How and, can they fuck this up? Yeah. They're like just like I guess they like, compute the weapons create rate. I, I have no idea. It's just it's just wrong. I, I wasn't able to like get the the thing that they are like displaying there on from the stream. And I found the like the source on GitHub. And do you remember I have like an did you know widget on the on Anka? I yeah. have like a thing that says like uh, let me find it verbatim. Hold on. This one, right? It, it's it says like, yeah, yeah, at the bottom. Amber is best girl. Uh, that too, yeah. Hold on, where's this? Where are them? I ate hey, your UID. Yeah, NK yeah. extension. Cars so, so it says, cars generated on the site don't have CV on them. Reason, CV is not real. Never look at CV to increase your damage or team performance. And like the script specifically has this line. And like when, when it sees it in the, in the did you know, it replaces it with like their own three like choices. Like CV is very great. Oh CV, my is, God. CV is nice. Use CV to rate. The thing. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that, that's like serious coping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sent the link. Oh, I think I could... Oh my gosh. Just just control F CV space. Yeah, yeah. See, with Anger extension CV is here. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, yeah, looking I, for it. I had an idea of like detecting changes to the layout. Text waiting. And just like play, oh, playing the explode GIF on top of it. Yo, this is this is actually hilarious. This this is like an actual like battle of attrition. Actual bad brain rot, yeah. Oh my god. I wonder what they would do if I like just undefined the mutation observer. Wait, it says that it shows something from Akasha. Are they like making Yeah, yeah, they also have like the they fetch the leaderboard position for the build. Somehow. You can read the code to figure this out. Oh yeah, they do get a well they display Akasha top. I need to find this quarry. Yeah, I was like I was trying to find it and I didn't find it. Actually, it would be a lot more simple to just remove your text algo and replace it instead of this. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, it's, it's funny. Initiated match all network. Oh my gosh. That, that is actually hilarious. I, I think, I think <laughs> people have been like making like optimizer mods for for a bit of time. I know, I know Mimi had like the optimizer mod for a while as well. Oh my god! Yeah. Fine, but like... <laughs> I, I mean, I I literally did the sim because I made a um, extension that was showing me CV in optimize. <laughs> Great. 
there's there's a there's a oh, hello, CD multi target I that I know of, but uh, you know I I feel like if they're in my Discord and they're so desperate for it, you might as well. You know, pop, you know like if if you in my Discord, you're looking for CV, you should know better. So like people who find that off multi target probably either there to piss me off, in which I refuse to give a reaction, or <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's like a rite of passage, you know, to at least use a CV once. Oh, hi, Ventura. Oh, uh, hi. Remember the guy I talked about who should be working on his PhD but instead over engineers or calculation engine? Hi. That's him. <laughs> How's your PhD going? Well. Okay, a better question is, is would you have finished your PhD if you didn't have to waste your time over-engineering the engine? It, it, it would make no difference. I would just play Elden Ring, oh, yeah, to be true. honest. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just make the Genshin Optimizer your PhD. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting, yeah. I wanted to add a bit about competition. Uh, if there is competition, like it's it's fun because you can learn from each other and implement all what you learned in your next projects. Like and we're not going to work on Genshin well. forever. Yeah, I I think I think as if you're like a I I feel like Genshin is not going to last forever, obviously, but I feel like I gotta look for my next ship, next big project, next pro big problem to solve for real. I, think... is I will, I will probably like survive for a while. Like the the that will release if I add the Z. So like I survive on diversity. I think I will. I could like add with ring waves if they have a showcase. People already asked me if I'm gonna make Amber for with ring waves, and they was like, no. It's there's no reason why like one person needs to manage all this stuff. Like let let other more invested yeah. people do the thing. Like uh, actually. One person already makes it, and like he asked me, he asked some devices, asked if he can, if he could borrow some of my design stuff, and I was like, okay, come to me, talk, and we're gonna throw it out. I think there's someone like that in the Genshin, uh, in the Go to, I think, right? Okay. I think I remember saying Every that. Every time I offer for someone else to take up the project, their eyes kind of glaze over. <laughs> I'm not gonna give my project to anyone because it's gonna oh no no it's gonna die with me <laughs> yes I, I think even like even though my project is open source and free I don't think anyone is mad enough to maintain it other than me oh yeah mm. same same thing yeah Look, man, you offered it to me once, and my eyes glazed over. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you need to wake up every month at 6 a.m. and work on pre-load, and then sleep. <laughs> and then sleep. <laughs> uh, yes, I always write, like, uh, okay, here is your update, and I'm going to sleep. That's funny. I think I think I'll go does the same. <laughs> uh question, let's go to the backlog, I think. Uh before Genshin, what did you guys do? So before Genshin, I was a firmware developer at a at a tech company. Mm, before, uh, like how before I like I did so many so much different stuff, but like mostly I did like camera work and this was just like running around with lamps through different countries we had like a team uh, filming different stuff officially oh sorry i'll go you want to, you want to continue no i like it. that's it uh, officially nothing uh, like uh, i was just a translator artist like i was drawing stuff then i decided to like start learning programming I made some bots, uh, then I made some stuff to extract the data, then one person worked on one game that I like, 
and that I have a website uh, for a project uh, for review Starlight. And then I was like, hmm, I can make better website. Then I decided to look like at the game, at the code, how to do with stuff. I learned, I learned Python, JavaScript, Vue, how to interact with the data, some backend stuff, and like made my website and also made some bots to get the data for my friends, like cards for some game and stuff like this. And now I and now basically I'm stuff doing like... the same thing. Like I have uh I have three websites. I have several bots. I am translating some news, uh, game news, and uh, I also draw sometimes. And now I want to keep drawing even more. Like I have a rest from development. That's my rest. The end. Yes, in my case, I suppose. Uh... I mean, I guess I was just a student uh, for the university. I was just studying computer science, uh, and then, and then, and now I'm still uh, just a software engineer. I'm making websites uh, as my main job, either way. Um, and but like less officially, uh, I suppose I was like a Discord moderator. I think that's. Uh, where my path with algo kind of crossed maybe not really but yeah. um uh like my first app was a discord bot uh, for a madoka magica server i believe and like uh, one of the developers that's helping you algo right he he was there Apple. yeah yeah, 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 we yeah. Made, like with him we i was like an admin on the kagura server for like four years or five at this point yeah, he was a like big the Kaguya good, good, good guy, yeah. for Kaguya. And the, like, Kubari, the manga reader thing, which is, like, on live support, but it's still more or less there. Yeah, I still use it from time to time. Yep, I, st I still do myself. Uh, was PhD? Still PhD? Yes. <laughs> still PhD. Well, let, let's still hope PhD. that changes how soon. Long? Hopefully, I mean, uh, my funding is gonna run out very, very oh soon. So <laughs> let's hope that that changes soon. Who made Discord bot as first project? Raise your hands. I guess I did. I made like Mega Day bots back in the day. That's before. And then they like banned all of, like the YouTube music bots. Oh, is that why Mega Name Bot just disappeared? Yes, because they they've they've made uh, the feature impossible to do. I was wondering. My first, my first project was like way back in like when I was like ten or something, and I made a bot for a Facebook Flash game to like mm. automatically collect res collect resources. Uh, my major actually is uh, from video game design, so uh, I was doing a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, game prototypes. So that's are probably my first projects. Yo, boy, that's our out. Yo, let's let's just make a let's just make a you, you video game after this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. No uh, more making honestly... websites for video games. We just make them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm bad at with art, so. Uh... When there has to be like some three D asset or something, yeah, I'm stuck. I think art, I th yeah, I th the issue with is being like a especially indie video game developer is that you do have to wear a lot of hats. You, not only are you a good programmer, you have to be a good designer, art asset, music, all of those things. But I think given the day age we're in, a lot of that can be compensated with AI. Like even oh, yeah. even if you don't have finalized assets, you could use placeholders and AI can make really good placeholders enough for you to get enough interest to get like formalized assets. Yeah, I mean, back when I was doing these prototypes, that wasn't a thing, but now it is. So I could come back to it. Although you need, I was working in Unity mostly and now their license is total garbage I have, so. Let's let's shift to Godot. Let's, let's go full open source. 
Oh, Godot, I want to learn it. I want to make my game. I have a lot of, like, a lot of plans, a lot of things in mind. My imagination is infinite, but <laughs> I need to, I need to train myself in art a lot more. Dang. That's, that's, the, that's the issue. We're just a bunch of programmers who want to design game systems, but don't want to do any art. No, no, I mean, like, I've I, done I, art for, like, for a while. Ooh. I know how to draw. What do you mean, ooh? Did you not see my Deventer? Well, I, I know. I'm just saying, ooh, I say we have a solution to our problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. We joked, like, a lot with, like, reverse engineering people that, like, we studied Genshin codebase so much that we can, like, build the second Genshin at this point. Hmm. <laughs> so maybe we should, like, just gather and make a game or something. I don't know. Make Genshin back to fly. <laughs> well, no, let's... let's... I'm, I'm like totally up to like make this more concrete. Like, let's stop our community development for two weeks. Let's do a fucking game jam. I'm, I'm serious. I'm so sick of coding out Genshin Optimizer. This, this is a fucking brush of fresh air. Oh, it's all quit on one update. We, we just, just gotta just uh, drop Genshin. We gotta just find like a slow time between two patches and just grind it out. I like. I have no ideas for a game, honestly. I don't want to give my ideas. They're mine. <laughs> I have lots of ideas for <laughs> sure. <Gatekeepers. laughs> yes. But, yeah. Uh, Fred, there was a question that's kind of related to oh, you no. and me. Was uh, it the one most... with the integration of, of Optimizer and Akasha? Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, I guess it's worth talking about it. A of, bit. Like the feasibility to implement uh, integrated multi-opt on either website? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's really a matter of uh, like I would obviously have to I don't know, rewrite everything uh, because I, currently it just doesn't work. I would uh, even but... think I would even hazard to think that we should join forces because like the the issue is that currently optimizer is very difficult around the edges, especially in the, in the interface part. All the inputs are manual, all the outputs are manual, and then we have all, all this crazy migration when data format change. We wanted a backend for a long time. Maybe we just need to make a backend together. Then we then a lot of our problems can be scaled and solved. Yeah, maybe I'm definitely waiting for that uh, Panda engine. So it's in a library form, and I think uh, implementing that into my calculations instead of whatever I have right now mm -hmm. uh, will probably be a first step that I will have to do uh, regardless. There, there is a workaround to that. Uh, Optimizer does a pre-compilation step where it, it just compiles everything except the actual final stats. So you could, you, we could create an intermediary calculator that you just need to feed in the stats. And, and that's that's basically how optimizer is able to reiterate over like hundreds of thousands of builds over like seconds. Mm -hmm. So you literally just need that. That we could just extract that out. Mm -hmm. I think. Like, am I am I saying bullshit or am I correct? Oh, uh, that is largely correct. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how we deal with that. There's also another pruning, but that's irrelevant. Yeah. Pruning is irrelevant thing. because that that's only applicable yeah. for like self optimization. We're talking about multiple. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's just a uh, single build imagined by just prune the bottom half and just like nah, you're not ranked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who will maintain the no. website? It's okay. The website can go without me for two weeks. I mean, I can go on until a new character drops. Yeah, uh, well, like, I don't even deal with adding a new character because that's like, that's mainly handled by someone who actually knows enough about Genshin to implement it. So really, the, the only maintain maintenance I do to the website is just add features and cost UI churn. So if, if only if we could just like export the freaking like the character mechanics from the game and we cannot because pin output is like is incredibly hard to parse. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's terrible. I think I think we're no matter what, we're stuck with the intermediary numbers. Like we could extract all the multipliers, but then we still have to take each multiplier and plug it into the formula system in a way that makes sense. And sometimes we don't do it correctly on the first try. And that's like the most manual part about adding a new character. 
as long as they don't introduce like new mechanics like DOL or something like that. Even on my side, like I have to do corrections for buffs that are like only mm -hmm. apply on field, but they are not represented in the showcase because I don't calculate the stats myself. I have to do like corrections for the things they don't calculate. Oh well, uh, changing stuff uh, like for Amber. I have some stuff that I have to adjust at first. It's uh, enemies for the abyss sometimes. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, because, like, um, in the data, like, you can't properly link, like, enemies uh, to their IDs. Sometimes you have to map everything manually. And, like, sometimes, sometimes values don't even exist. Uh, like also sometimes for enemies themselves, like you have to map uh, materials that they drop because some enemies don't have them listed uh, server sided, and like sometimes it can happen for uh, for whatever actually. If developer will decide to make something server sided or to move it somewhere else, like from uh, from the data that you used before. You have to deal with that, and in Genshin, it's a big gacha. Mm, it, is, it is a difficult problem to solve, for sure. Uh, bin output. You said about bin output. They, like, mm, if they moved one thing to bin output, it means that they can move everything to bin output. And I think Wait, one day they're gonna move all characters and all skills to bin output. And then we'll have to edit all our scripts. Like, like they did it with stories. A long time ago, all the stories data, like, uh, dialogues, they were in one file. And they just stopped updating it. So I had to work a lot to get the stories done correctly. And like, it was pretty, uh, not painful, but just long. And they can do the same with everything. It's just a matter of time and needs. By the way, you calculate resistances on Amber top. Do you think like you can just throw this code for like the, where to find it in Excel to like, for the Genshin optimizer, um, because like right now they don't have a like resistances for the mobs in Genshin optimizer. Oh yeah, we we haven't we haven't bothered building the pipeline because every time we dive into it, it's oh, just gosh. a resistance for mobs. Uh, well, it's like is is there on Ember top? Yes, but like the thing is like for Vistario, it's a lot easier because you can like. Uh, get what uh, get to one enemy and like get all other enemies uh, linked to this main one. In Genshin, it's absolute madness. Like you 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 can never get uh, all enemy. Like, like you can get a lot of Hilichurus and one Hilichuru like with different ideas that will be missing in your mapping, and that's the problem. And uh, that's the problem with abyss data. If abyss data, like, let's be simple. Uh, for the abyss, uh, the data that being displayed in the game is just like a monster name, monster image, and level. Everything else is being sent by the server. In Starrail, as I understand, it's mapped straight to the ID, like. Monster ID 111, and like you can find this ID in the data. In Genshin, it's absolutely not, and you have to fix it yourself. Yeah, and like, that... to get current abyss, you would have to like enter abyss, make all the mobs spawn, and like dump them. And it's like it's still not not really like a trivial thing to do. Oh, what a pain. There is one, there is one yeah. person that uh, works with abyss data, and like I check uh, my values. Thanks to them. Community, yay. Community work, community help. Uh, be, it's not, it's good to be good. It's good to be good. Well, I, I think it's just unnecessary time. That, like, it, it yeah. feels like a shit task. If we have this know? data, yeah. There's, like, like, there's so much lost effort, actually. 
but like what do you do <laughs> what can you do I, I think i'm gonna like trigger lentura's ptsd but like reverse looking up of rounded values that has been like oh my fucking god <laughs> can i curse here um well i guess you can now i guess it's it's weird because i, I have no programmers way. tend to be like ugly mouth sailors in terms of cursing like eh. i i know at one point in my life i have to like constantly scrub out all the co like profanity i put in with my like printouts and comments just so i could submit code <laughs> Anyway, go on, go on. Don't mind me. Oh, I'm I'm just simply saying that like if if we didn't have that to go through this hurdle of like almost reverse engineering how the game works and then like keep maintaining our understanding of how the game works with with our unstable infrastructure, we'd be able to do so much more with our, our products. Yep. By the way, about the cursing um interesting bit i think i have a video on youtube that has like sixty thousand views by now and literally in the first five seconds of it i think i dropped like three racial slurs that are very not accepted by today's standards <laughs> like oh, it was okay wow. 10 years ago but <laughs> oh, uh, also the thing uh, the thing with genshin is that the data is pretty like old and it's unlikely that Mikhoyo is gonna fix that for us. Well, let's we can we can only hope. I I think yeah. I think us sharing our common pain and kind of getting on the same page as what what words like a lot of our generalized problems are is a very good step towards finding out exactly what we need if it ever comes to opportunity that presents itself that could give us easy access okay. to some of this data. Actually, help me understand this a bit, uh, because from what I remember, Mihoyo actually was very helpful to community uh, creators, um, some of them, in a way that they were uh, sharing the 3D models for free, right? That was a thing? On Binibili. Yep. Yeah. But so, they share like, it like in the in Miku Miku dance format, which is yeah. like... Uh... Yeah, so uh, I don't know if they have all of them or if they are still doing it, but it kind of shows like they are willing to, uh, you know, provide some assets or something. So the funny thing about that, though, is like, yes, they did that, but like every 3D modeler I know uses the actual extracted models from the game instead because they're like way more sane than whatever. I can explain why. Because well, like, it's like it's obvious because like the format is just like more sane, I guess, and the shaders uh, not, are not just meant format. to work with this. Not just format. Uh, Genshin have like specific shaders and shader maps that uh, people need. Uh, without this shader ma shader maps, it's pretty hard to adapt shading. Uh, it's it's kind of ironic because like all of the Hoyo Fair stuff using three D models. They're like they're, they're all data mining. They're all reverse reverse engineered traders. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> I doubt because, like, they uh, provided actual like models to them. A long time ago, when I uh, worked with three D models, I actually picked up official one, uh, Ningguang model, and it was very messy. Like it's like absolutely uncomfortable to work. Mm-hmm. That's a good question, by the way. What is your opinion about game design and computer science degrees? Uh, oh, we are we calling about questions? Sorry, I got on a tangent. Um, uh, I'm lost in life, to be frank. No, what I want to do, no desire to do anything. Oh, uh, um, I was I was like you. I think quite a lot of points in my life. I think I was very lost in university. I didn't believe what I was learning was going to be applicable in life. I was lost in my first job because I didn't think that what I was doing matters. I think it's it's not about what our opinion on game design, computer science, because we're all going to be biased in our own way. I think it's it's more about finding that thing that has value in your life, and 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 we I, I think you'll be improper for us to give you what we think. I think it's it's more of that that is it's not something that you have to kind of introspectively find yourself. Uh, for us, I, I, like if like if we, if we didn't become computer science uh, 
majors or like game designers or something, we would have found we would have found another outlet towards our inclination to solve problems in some way. We would have become engineers. We could have become you know like guidance counselors or something like that. Where where we 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 just finding problems in life and solving them. So I, I guess fundamentally you need to see it that way. Like specifically about degrees, uh, like I think you get the degree in case you actually want like in-depth knowledge and like only because of that. Because I like I don't have a degree in like neither computer science or film or anything. I like went from school to college. I studied there for like two years and I quit because they didn't teach me anything that was like worth my time, I guess. So for the rest of stuff, I just learned. And I learned what I cared about. And like, I just made myself care about a, about like a lot of stuff. And the, like the most, I think, general thing between all of those is just like solving problems. Like if someone has a, like if I have a problem and I see that everyone else also has this problem, I'm like, okay, what tools can I use to solve this problem? So this is like more or less why I learned programming. Because I was like, oh, I can use like code to resolve something. So like that, that is most of the, my motivation for doing stuff. Like you see a problem, you resolve it. It's like, or like understanding systems, I guess, is also a fun thing about it. Yeah, for me, for example, to get into programming, because I wasn't very much into it at first, uh, was to, to see something that you create, especially if it's like instant feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was creating some random ass programs for a class that you know, calculate the fucking five uh, Fibonacci number, who cares, right? Uh, but then you run something like Unity Engine, which is free. And if you are into programming, I honestly recommend downloading some game engine. And like literally what you write comes to life right away. I think it makes for a great experience. Uh, you don't even need that much programming language because most of these engines have you know sliders or like uh, some scripting or like uh, you just can modify e x y coordinates literally by inputting them you don't have to actually program them and then you can just ease in into programming more um so what i'm trying to say is that you can get into programming easily and if it's about motivation i think uh, seeing that instant feedback of something is uh, really helpful uh, because otherwise you're just you don't feel like you're doing anything. Um, and I think that also translates to websites in a sense, because they are literally right away updated. Um, we do have uh, access to NCA right now. Nothing stops you from uh, you know, trying your own app, making a Discord bot maybe that displays uh, some data. I think it's a really good place to start. You don't have to specifically get into university, do game design degree or something. Uh, I, I, I honestly think degrees themselves are overrated and nobody ever asked, asked me about my degrees. Uh, it's more about what you got out of it. But then again, you can get the same knowledge really out of, um, well, maybe not the same, but most of it from, I don't know, YouTube or something. Um, so, a lot of things yeah. they like they always lag behind too. Like depending on where you're from and the quality of education in, in your country, my college specifically teached programming languages that were, were like ten years out of date. Oh yeah, that's also so, always a thing. So like you, if you if you know how to learn, you don't need a degree uh, like other, other it would. except for like specific circumstances where like an engineer and you have to have a certification. Like I would almost disagree with the current like the current status quo. I think with especially with kind of like the tech bubble kind of crashing, layoffs everywhere. If if given all uh, if all candidates are the same, you they will almost pick someone with a degree unless you're like five ten years uh, experience. Then they will pick whoever has the most relevant experience. Or not, it, like if you have a banger project without a degree, I think you will be picked instead. I don't know. Well, I, that's how it was for me, like two times. Yeah, yeah, I I totally agree, and this is this is for me as well. I I think I was underqualified to work for the job that I got from Optimizer, but 
you know, it's, it's in terms of a professional experience. I just don't think that that's a relevant advice we, we could give now, especially someone who wants to get into like all the CS stuff. It, it would take three. It would take at least three to five years to just go through the education system, and then all they have is this this like their education. I think they need both the education and a good project to to get ahead. Yeah. There's also a problem of like having student student debt after that. So oh, like, yeah. that's also a thing you that's like, always not because in nice. my country I wouldn't have a student debt. But like in the in the US you're like screwed. Uh in my opinion, degree is just uh like a mark of like what did you achieve uh by all the times that you learned. But it like it doesn't mean like for some people degree is just like uh, to just to get a job but they might not actually achieved it uh let's say they cheated or they bought it or something like that but the the main thing is how you enjoy the stuff you do and how you feel like doing it like you, you can you can always cheat and get a degree you want, but if you don't feel like what you're doing is what you like, it's gonna be bad. And like I am absolute zero in math and calculation stuff, but I liked to help people. I liked to learn, and I tried to make everything fun. Like everything that I did, I tried to make it fun and entertaining and if you'll be able to achieve this uh, uh great and all the stuff isn't gonna be on your mind at all like you will achieve it but it's not gonna be your main task you'll be having fun and that's what you need to achieve but the issue is, the is that is like, like the fun will... part is only like a small percentage you still need to have to motivate yourself go through the boring oh, part yeah? to get to the yeah. fun part. That's what I was saying. Like you, nobody like will learn you. You have to learn. So, you, like your choice of where to learn and what to learn is like entirely your own. So you can go to university and like not learn anything because you just like refused to learn because you didn't do it like analytically. You just went through, through the motions. It will bore. It will be boring. But you can also have fun learning without any university or like somebody needing to force you to learn. I think that's like the main important. Just internal internalize learning everything you come across, and you'll be fine. Make everything natural. Yeah, like you just need to have the desire to like know stuff. You look at a thing and you're like, oh, I wonder how this works. Oh, I wonder if this skill will be useful. Oh, I, like I wonder this. So I think that's like the main point. It's also like an interesting thing about this is the uninterest is usually self-motivated. You could, like you're not interested in something by itself. It is like you who creates the interest. So if you feel like you're disinterested in like everything around you, you just have to like pick a thing and be interested in it. Like just put th some thoughts into it and like figure out like the underlying stuff, I guess. And a lot of interesting, interesting like details about things start popping up. And you can use, then use these things to like make informed decisions. And I think that's like that's the fun thing. Mm -hmm. When you're like when you're knowledgeable about something, you can be certain, and this gives you like a lot of con confidence that you know something and you can operate in the field. And like two things, experience gives you confidence, and the like the understanding that you know things and which things you don't know. When you you're the puppeteer. When you can, when you can control everything and make a use of anything you see. It's... Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. Like you start looking at things from the standpoint of like, like I want to know how this works more or less. It's like it's for me. Uh, for me, it's like that. Like I enjoy analyzing systems. You know and, what like, it reminds me? Well. It reminds me about speedrunning games. When you're looking at the wall and like I can jump on I can jump on it and like be on the next level. 
Kind of, kind of like, it's like you're speaking about like having so much knowledge that you're able to bypass the hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's but also. Thing. It takes a lot of hard work to get that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's As the it's fun. It takes a lot of experience and a lot of like meticulous attention to things. Not everyone has that, but like not everyone needs to have that. You can just like do things that are fun to you. I think that we I spent... spent like a lot of time just like doing random Minecraft stuff because I had fun with like command blocks and, 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 and like doing maps. Oh no, that project I'm desperately procrastinating on. You've been don't we all have like a twenty of them? Yes, I think I think that's the issue. Is it's like it's especially with people who are kind of almost attention deficit pro problem solvers they want to design the perfect system or they're super motivated to get started and then they just drop it when it gets to the boring part of actually maintaining it or building it out yeah and then oh a new problem <laughs> and, and then you just find the next problem and then the cycle goes on and on like you have nothing to show for it it's it's terrible uh -huh. I wonder if I'll ever like finish my Amber documentary. I don't think you've so. been talking about the Amber documentary for years. For two years, <laughs> two years or three years at this point. I don't know. Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> I'm just like I'm just not interested in the game anymore. So like, even if I did, I like I just cannot dedicate the time. Yeah, I I I like for, as a friend who has known you for two years of Amber documentary, I suggest you literally do anything else with your life. Yep. I, I think I think you have this like complex that you you had something in your mind that you wanted to do, but you haven't done it yet. But those pieces don't make a, co a documentary. They barely make a YouTube short. <laughs> no, no, like I, I have the full thing. I just like I just need to do it, but like I have no time to do it. I, I think that, like the biggest hurdle was writing a camera and like I have the camera. Mm -hmm. I you demo it for me. Cinematic toolkit. Hmm? Yeah, you demoed it to me, the, the camera, the camera movement and all that. It's like entirely yeah, in-engine yeah. rendered. Yeah, yeah, so like you can do like all kinds of like funky YouTube videos with it. But like I just don't have the motivation. Like there's no reason for me to do Genshin content because like I don't find it interesting anymore. It's like the, I think like I would maybe find it, find it interesting, but like the game spread it itself thin with too many characters. So by this point I'm like, eh. Spread the thing with too many Amber characters. Gotcha she's game. Like, she's 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 not really relevant anymore, really. Okay. And like I think someone needs to say this to you, Algo. I don't think Amber has ever been relevant. No, what do you mean? Like she presents like uh, like I would talk about this for hours. But, like she presents a subset, <laughs> sub a subset of the game. From that, that content. Like, yeah, it's it, like it just represents a subset of the game which like does not abide by the general like Genshin architecture. You can like just take Amber, like go fight a boss, and like just use Zola Amber to fight the boss. It's like Dark Souls kind of thing, and it's like that is fun. You can like it's just you beautiful. Can, you can pass the domain with like the three mages, with, with just Amber, or you can pass the Pyre domain with like all Pyre stuff with just Amber. It's incredibly hard. You have to ha like farm for like days to be able to do it, but like. That I find this fun. I find like mechanical skill fun. There you and, have like, it. Genshin devs are all mentally people... ill. When? <laughs> oh my goodness. What? 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 Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. Uh, we're all a little bit mentally ill. I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't put it that way. I think we're all stuck on the problem that we've solved years ago. That's a better <laughs> way to describe us. Kind of. We have to like maintain a thing that we already solved. Okay. That's that's honestly the hard part of a project. It's like the, like we've hit success where a project gets wide adoption, but then but then the hard part is the grind of maintaining it, bringing new features, evolving and past with this. Like all of these things, especially if you're not, not not motivated to play the game anymore, you lack the inference to see what players want from your your tools. That that's when it gets super hard in terms of progression yeah i think one like another another thing for me in projects is art like i make a website half because i want to solve a problem and half because i want to present something like beautiful some like fun ui decisions Same. something that looks great uh that just like aesthetic i guess uh things 
So that's the reason why I wanted like to film a thing because I, I wanted to like have a like extremely beautiful, very well filmed video that nobody really did. Uh, so that's like why I'm still stuck because I I still have like the artist part of me. I'd say your project is like Half Life Three. It have to be beautiful, but who knows when it's gonna actually release? Yeah, it's never gonna be released. It's just canceled. But but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> And now you guys tell me, who is who is gonna bring me Genshin builds so I can add them to my website? Huh? Who? I think the, I think what like Paimon.moya does is they just parse the Genshin build spreadsheet every like on the official. Actually, server. I was thinking to talk with a Genshin Wizard developer because they're using my API, so maybe just to, like take builds from there. Get your wizard retired? No. Kinda is, kinda isn't. It's like <laughs> he's almost like retired as Spymon that my retired. It's like Oh, so he's up, SRL, I see. It's like, it's I talked dead. with them. Very nice person, very like uh, good mood. I think like Hatter also like just is over overwhelmed a bit. I think like like we talked a bit where they like were barely making like back the cost of hosting for their bot, mm. not like even making that much profit. So. I actually wonder how much data they were using with the storage and all, because like for Akasha, the database just started rapidly expanding and I had to move my servers like three times already. And right now I have like 64 gigs of RAM and terabytes, terabytes of storage. So yeah. yeah. I mean, for Genshin Wizard, they also have like the immense real-time computation cost because they have to generate images for all the commands, and because of that, they, they, their overhead is like crazy. I feel. I think Genshin another issue with Genshin creation is that like how people use your tool and how how people even play the game evolves every time they do a new patch. They don't evolve yeah. it to the point where it breaks everything, but eventually you're gonna hit a breaking point where you either have to redesign your whole system, or you you're gonna have to duct tape the the rest of the your life. Remember when like Dendro came out and the SRL just died? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's like it's so funny to me like how CV still exists when like Dendro came out because like, bro. Anyway, so I, I think we should at least time gate this stream to like four hours. I think four hours was kind four of our enough, yeah. higher estimate. So we have yep. 18 minutes to take your questions. Those those who's uh, falling asleep, like falling asleep, listening to the stream, wake up and uh, just ask us some questions, you know? I have a uh, high priority questions from like my own secret list. Oh, yeah. Uh, they came in the mail, and the mail had like the envelope had a very funny payment on it. Okay. Um, so, what did we not cover? Um, do, 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 Are we talking about the the mail in the in the the organization server channel? Yep. Uh, yeah. So, what question? What question did we not? Let me let me add. I know. Actually, I just did. Um, I can I clip the inside of this question without no yes. no 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 um yeah no just you can like just just take one of the questions and start answering it anything that we didn't cover mm -hmm. what do we uh, actually the, this is like an interesting question did you ever have like any direct contact with like uh, I guess Mihoya, like, did anyone ever reach out to you? I think I, I got reached out for by a community manager, but the issue is that they were, they were, they were looking for content from like a conventional content creator. They were like asking yeah. for opinionated content, which I can't generate using optimizer and I don't have the right. platform. And, and, and I think after that, uh, after I told them that this is not the content that we're able to produce simply because we're, we're, we're just not a, like a place where we could host opinions to uh, i think that, that that conversation just died out 
Yeah, me neither. I don't. I mean, uh, I don't get any contact from Mihoyo. Um, Akasha is probably the youngest website as well, so who knows? Uh, but I also don't really see why would they really contact me? Uh, because you know I'm built like on top of uh, NK, like fundamentally it's optimizers more. Uh, a thing and data wise, uh, Amber is more a thing. So, like, Akasha is just like, you know, whatever in the middle, uh, a connection of everything, kind of. This is a good question. And, like, about like, is there anything we are holding up that is like exciting? I guess, like, I have a lot of ideas that I want to implement, but, like, like I'm kind of dead to actually sit down and implement them. Uh, probably, like, because of the fact that I also do front-end at work, so, like, I don't want to get home and, like, do more front-end work, but I still want to do it, but, like, I don't have the time or effort or, like, the energy to do it, but, like, I still have a lot of things I wanted to do. Like more stuff for like pay, uh, people who actually like support me on Patreon. I wanted to have like a community ad space. So instead of like running Google ads, I would like uh, people who do things for the community, like content creators, streamers, maybe like design artists. They could like place ads on Anka to like advertise advertise their own projects. Oh hey, we already uh, have I ad space on Optimizer. This is why yeah. I added it. Yeah, yeah, like this kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to like do the build management better uh yeah there's like a lot of stuff i still am kind of working on or like have in mind like build workbench and stuff but like it's just i know i feel i just don't have enough energy at this point i, just I am to... actually like semi in response to the chat uh, from steve uh I'm actually unironically thinking with my game dev uh, back uh, ga be blah, 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 game dev uh, background uh, that I could actually maybe make some browser game based on Genshin like Akasha data. Like oh, your important characters that. could be, be actually fun, like yeah. some you know like an auto chess combat thing, thing, right? Like that, right? Yeah, something Remember like the that. Remember the thing they did, like the Hollow Knight ripoff? Somebody did like a fan game for for Genshin. Yes, I like, was thinking you, of something like even just simple, just you know, some extension of uh, engine. I, I'm I'm not saying to add end game, but you, you know what I mean. We we've added end game. We just need to add more end game. More end game. We Make are the, the end game. Optimizer its own game. I mean, like let, let's face it, Genshin Optimizer <laughs> was pretty much solving the game. And then Akasha come around, and now everyone's trying to solve Akasha using Optimizer. How is this not us building our end game? Yeah. Um, we could actually go through the questions and just say if we went over them or not, that would be easier, right? I wanted to make like Optimize more social. The issue is that I just lack the like the amount of like support as like contributors and like system design to get to a point where I can sufficiently get a backend going in a scalable way. What were you thinking about the social thing? Just sharing or maybe like, an actual Well like like all these stuff that we're sharing like configurations for multi targets teams, just share a link and then they you they you can import it in your on your account. Or like share an artifact from Genshin Optimizer instead of clipping it, just link it. Like all of these things can be easily done out of the box with a backend. Just just a database with an ID. That's all I need. Oh, there's an ad. Oh, ad. Okay, I guess I guess we we gotta chill. Yeah, I was thinking you could like add some. I know you don't want to tell people how to play, but if it's on the backend anyways, you could like. Most commonly used community, you know, configuration. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, you could like make it so you can post like your multi-target configs and like a, and have like a leaderboard of them. Yeah, or something no. like 
repository. It'll, it'll pretty much be Akasha with uh, with optimizer integration. I think it, it would pretty much be like a union of our two solutions. It would be like a leaderboard, and then you could just click on the leaderboard. You get like the 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 team. You can import the team, and then people will be act will just apply their think, own I artifact would... to the team, like optimizer does. They could I, feed imagine, back like, into. The... Could... Go for it. If you could like uh, create like a multi multi target config. And then people like so like leaderboards created automatically out of all multi-target configs existing. Like imagine how much like how much headache that would take to implement. <laughs> what do like, you mean? It's, it's like, not a lot, you, but the thing is currently it's just not doable. Like uh, yeah, there are some the, things like, in optimizer that cannot be done. Uh, like I have some crazy new uh, assumptions that I think. They went really well, but it's like calculating teammate bloom damage based on the buffs you do. Like optimizer doesn't have that at the time. Uh, I think I assume uh, custom uh, echoes of the offering prop rate because it's based on ping. Uh, Genshin bases it on like you know it's fifty percent, right? Right, but but it's not. So I just make it like forty five. Uh, and at the time, uh, it cannot be done, but I suppose with the next iteration of the engine, all of these things could could potentially be possible. Yeah, the, the issue is that all the scalability of ambition is like, it, the, like we have solved a lot of problems, and we even solve a lot of the future problem is the grind of getting to implement that solution. The problem now. It's like literally optimizer has like two things left: new calculation engine that that fixes or at least duct tapes all the problems that we have with the existing engine and the actual backend. Once those two things are done, I will actually consider optimizer to be like complete. It is complete, and you it just is like complete into I... the beam of light. <laughs> My greatest creation is finally complete. That's my greatest creation, and then I can move on with my life and maybe finally fix that terrible sleeping habit. Yeah, then you rename it from God Opus Magnum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no SRO. SRO can be handled by someone who actually understands Star Rail. I've, I've built the system. It's open source. Someone else can build it. And someone else is building it, except they're very busy with their life because they. Yeah, they're... I have an inkling someone already has, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's that's the that's yeah, the, the issue. There's, there's like, what do you call it? the the? <sighs> What's the optimizer called for? Yeah, yeah, Fribbles. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it has like anchor integration. Yeah, I I think Fribbles is like a good solution towards a lot of the Star Rail stuff. Right. I just don't. I just don't agree with some of the solution, but that's just creative differences. Everyone has those. I I think it's just like SRO was an exploration of feasibility towards our new engine. Whereas if we want to re-engine optimizer, it will be like it will be like a weeks long effort to get to a feasibility. So in terms of like SRO as an exploration of whether the new engine can pretty much handle anything we want, I think. It, at least it's, it's functional in that regard. Whether it is a product that someone else can use at the end is this almost secondary to me because there's already existing optimizer. Yep. If you all were to start a game jam, what would the topic be? That's a good question. If we if we all make a game, what would it be? What genre? I think I would go for like a roguelite. I mean, if it's just a like game jam, like just you know, for I don't know, we are streaming game jam or something. I would literally just make Genshin too, because why not? Mm. I would like make uh, some like something that we lack in Genshin Endgame, like reaction based something that actually has en like Endgame mechanics. I guess like a rogulite, maybe I don't know. There you would like enjoy creating. Uh, combinations of like characters or like combinations of uh, damage like sequences for, I guess. I, I really, really, really like Noita, for example. Like, I think it's like represents a game that like scr scratches my game itch like the most because it's like learning the systems, persevering, learning the w world around you, and like creating some 
really like wacky shit that just like stems from the freedom of uh, things you can do. So maybe that's something. Like, they can change so look that like right. Kind of like that, but like with reactions, maybe I don't know. I don't think it's so, even souls like souls like two D souls like two D rogue like souls like Genshin vampire survivor. Uh, I'd say okay. What buzzword are we missing? <laughs> what you know? I want Genshin Impact that will be like Doom, like uh, explorations, but with guns and all the movements. Which would be nice. Why don't you just play Wuwa? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it's no. so different. Uh, no, I want something bloody, something terrifying, where you can like crush all the monsters and like do uh, how it's called violence, violence, <laughs> fatality. Yeah. <laughs> I wish again. No, Vova is like it's fun, but no. Uh, Tower of Fantasy was close, but there is no quick combat. <laughs> yeah. I, Imagine I like you're a dungeon like... master of like Genshin Abyss. What would that be like? It would be interesting. You mean actual get good storytelling by someone that's not Mihoyo? I'd be up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, imagine like if like every time there's a new guy coming to raid your dungeon, what was it called? Like reverse tower defense genre. Oh, those. Yeah. Reverse I don't know, tower I like defense the games with the like with a skill requirement, I guess, where you can like try hard through, through stuff. Yeah. Making a game for Hoyo Fair. Oh yeah, that like that Hollow Knight uh, Hoyo Fair game was super good. I mean, it was like it was like a Hollow Hall of Knight direct inspiration, rather. I wouldn't call it a ripoff, but like it was basically Genshin Hollow Knight. It was yeah, good. it was done like, pretty, 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 It was pretty well, yeah, pretty well done. I didn't play Hollow Knight, but yeah. I think you know, like what I will lack the most, I think, in Genshin right now, it's it is story. Ironically, they have like such an incredible world. Uh, it's like really de detailed. The lore that you get through like the various miscellaneous things is like it's crazy good. But like the main story is just like never really. Actually, I find it weird because uh, when I started Genshin, everybody told me Honkai Impact Third has such amazing story. Genshin is gonna be just the same. Like, uh, blah, blah. and now Honkai Star Raid is up, and I don't play it, but I see some tidbits here and there, and people are praising it so much. Meanwhile, I'm just in this Genshin, and like, when is my turn, right? <laughs> I want to that too. <laughs> Actually, I want, like, uh, I talked about Doom like uh, Doom like Genshin game, and I'd say if, if Mihoy created, uh, open world game with mechanics like in Honkai 3, it would be my game. Because like Honkai 3 have everything. The story is crazy. It's literally crazy. And like you have guns, you have swords, you have all types of weapon and it's fun. Uh, I don't remember. And it's fun. And I'd like to have the game like that. Uh, Star Rail, yes, it's a good game. Like. I like for all the updates, I don't have anything bad to say about it. And like the story, my friends tell me that it has a good story. Like character development, uh, they really push it. And like get the game overall, you know what to do in it. So, story was fine. But I'd wish to have Honkai 3 open world and not open world like in Honkai, Hon Honkai Impact 3 part Hello, 2. Hello, optimizers. Oh, shit, I just clicked on my own video. What's wrong with me? Oh. I just heard my voice through my video. I've, I've just instantly hit with a <laughs> cognitive dissonance of that's my voice. Oh no, that's not my voice. Oh my god, the horrors. Yeah, that's usually how you shut people out, right? Just play your voice back to them. <laughs> I'm like I have my voice being like monitored in my headset at all times, so I'm used to this shit. 
Oh, I, I can't do that. Even when I do like voiceovers for my videos, like just playing them back hurts. Fair enough, but you do get used to it too. I hope I get used to it. I'm going to have to make more videos because I keep changing the UI. So I keep having to update the tutorial videos. Just, if like, it... just put, your, put, put yourself, like when you're in VC, just put yourself on like in your own headphones. Assuming there is no delay, you'll like get used to it. Yeah, I'll have to because, figure like, something out. If there is out. a delay, then it'll, it'll just throw you off. A I lot think... of VTubers are streaming with uh, audio feedback on, on their headphones, right? They just hear yeah. themselves all the time, so they can yeah. control their voices as well. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I that's think that's the, like a rational fear I have to get over. Yeah, uh, talk like, about your rational fears. I think I think we're we're it for today. We we gotta stop talking. We gotta save True. some. Uh, we gotta save some yapping for next stream. True. Okay. Uh, goodbye. Wait, 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 well, before we go back, <laughs> goodbye. I think I think everyone here. I mean, I think everyone here knows what our product is. But like, I, I, give you some time for self promotion. Um. Huh? Why? I I don't know. I think I think everyone should show their product just just this one last time. Do okay, you now we're being a no who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I need to promote myself? Okay, never mind then. If you want to know who has the biggest PP, you can just, you know, check out Akasha. <laughs> yep, and yeah. if you just want, like, I don't know, you can just check Akasha. I, I have no idea why you would go on Anka at this point. <laughs> the graphics is nice. Yeah. And guess, you, yeah. you get to have that big drawer of builds. True, true, true. I don't know why anyone will use Optimizer at your this UID, point. Basically. It's like the main feature you can claim your UID and you can <laughs> link your username and stuff. Oh, and also, I think like the biggest feature that sets it apart, it's it apart because you can add like Genshin account and Honkai Star Rail account and maybe there will be more like uh, Mihoyo games in the future that you can also link. I still don't support multiple UIDs per NK account on Akasha, so... Yeah, that, that too. If you have like four uh, Genshin accounts, you can, you can touch grass. But you can also create an account and add all of them. Oh, there's, there's okay. There's one final question worth answering. What tip would you give for beginning co coding? I say find a project you resonate with, follow the tutorial up to the point where you mm -hmm. could start playing around with the code, and then build something out of the skeleton of that framework. Don't don't just follow the tutorial and get a product of someone else's work. Take take this framework of their work and build something of your own. Just spend spend some time to think about like what you would do differently and like better or something, and just implement that. Uh, I think if I, I I think I already made some suggestion about like instant feedback thing, like just following around with game engine. Even if you're doing basic math, I think it's more fun if you see two uh, boxes bounce around and every time they bounce, I don't know, they multiply or and every time they touch, they you know disappear. Like that's cooler than just doing. Two times two divided by two, right? Like, um, but other than that, uh, I think uh, you have to kind of learn uh, how to. Oh my God, that's not really a suggestion, but uh, I think uh, le learning how to navigate uh, the uh, documentation is important. So, like, you can actually work alone and just get something done just by looking it up. Uh, not getting stuck. A lot of people are just stuck and they just start asking on Discord. Like, I mean, you have documentation right there, but yeah. A big thing I would recommend, like, is when you're learning something, make sure you're, like, if you want, uh, if you're like feel stuck on something and you like have no idea how it works and you cannot like proceed further, make sure you are reading something that is not like terribly complicated first. Like, step back to your like easier level maybe. And also make sure you understand the words that are being used. Because like some concepts are incredibly involved. They're like five layers deep. And if you don't like if you don't figure out the underlying concept of it, you may be like just floating in the air and not understanding anything. So like if you if you read a piece of text and you're like, I have no idea what this just said, try to find like the words that you did not understand in this thing. And like if it's a 
specific concept, like a programming concept, you just go back and like clear it up for yourself. And even like regular words, like just regular stupid English words can also be like misunderstood. So that is also important. Like if you feel stuck, just make sure you understand what you're reading. I think the, 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 I think the easiest thing to say, to summarize, is just get started. I think no matter what yep. we say, no matter how you do it, you just got to get started and you have to figure out your own way around it. Anyways, uh, we're, we're technically six minutes over, but we can <laughs> really quickly discuss what we would like to discuss on the next stream, maybe. And oh, yeah. Mm. So I think I'm going to be on vacation like after my next week's stream, so I don't have next weekend available. So it's going to be at least two week weekends away. That's fine. We'll like, we can gather more stuff until then. Yeah, so I I think we have we have plenty of time to figure out the topic instead of trying to uh, come up with it on the spot. Fair enough. And some interesting B-roll is needed. Yeah, well, also fair enough. Wait, did you say did you just say B-roll? <laughs> uh, what is it supposed to be? B-roll. Like having flash flashbacks. <laughs> no, like you're you're correct. I'm just like. Didn't hear someone say B-roll for a while. Anyways, and yeah, I agree. I can, I can, I can shoot something in Genshin and like using my camera that is not used for anything <laughs> and have B-roll. Yeah, we, or we could just uh, deep dive into. We could even feature like a new project or like deep dive into some other projects or topic that we didn't touch upon. Or yeah, we'll figure something out. We have so much. We have so much content to give. It's ridiculous. Yep. And this is so much easier than programming. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No one. No one's gonna review this. No one's gonna comment our code. We don't. This. We just gotta deliver it, and hopefully, hopefully, it, it works. Looks good to me. Looks good to me. Anyways, we really should be off. Um. I'm fine. Let me find the channel to read. Let's since since Jay's turn shout us uh, shout us up. We should uh, should rate him in return. Anyway, so we'll we'll notify you if we uh, ever plan another one of this, and um, have a nice rest of your day. What's the difference between programming and coding? I'm I don't, I'm not qualified to answer that. All right. Thanks for uh thanks for watching everyone. I will see you guys later. See you. Yeah, exactly. All right. See ya. See have ya. Good time, everyone. Actually don't don't I actually leave. Time, don't leave. Yeah. Don't leave. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, we're rated. We're rated. We're rated. <laughs>